dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time and we are back so previously on Missed Opportunities, um, the party has made their long, long voyage to the city of Portalucine, the um, strange and seemingly endlessly affluent capital city of the land of Dementlieu. Excuse me. Um, they've come here because they know that a founding member of the Thalassic League resides in this city. They will need to find this cultist and the obsidian obelisk this cultist possesses in order to undo a dark curse which has been placed on their new home of Saltmarsh. Upon arriving here, they were quickly given invitations to the Grand Masquerade, a ball held once a week by Duchess Cedra Donner, one of the city's most powerful nobles and a potentially suspected member of the Thalassic League. First catch of this, most of them are woefully underdressed for the occasion, the city being incredibly peacock-like and affluent. They've managed to secure finery for about half of the group after venturing into the Red Widow Theater. Costumes there are beautifully designed, well-tailored, and would pass at any formal occasion. However, two of the party members were lured away on a bit of a backstage tour by impressive acrobats. Um, and after <laughs> After uh, sneaking a kiss, both of them found their lips growing cold and their bodies growing rigid in paralysis. And their would-be paramours shape-shifted into giant spiders. Many of the acrobats followed suit. The leader of these acrobats shifted into a giant spider. The footlights flared, causing fire damage. A chandelier swung across, uh, knocking some of them around, and webs were everywhere suddenly. However, you have just finished and survived this combat. And as more and more spiders were seen crawling out of the recesses of this dark theater, a voice called out, telling them to stop, to which they skittered back up their webs into the rigging and away from sight. And you all saw a masked figure, mostly in black and white, looking like a jester of sorts, a court jester or something of the like. This figure looks down to all of you and you hear a voice emanating from behind this mask, though you do not see the lips moving nor any eyes behind this mask. Emissaries from Saltmarsh, I bear a message from one who knows what you seek. And you can see the head kind of twist around in an almost unnatural way. 
Obsidian pacts hold little use to he whose captors do refuse him liberty for healing's sake. They rob his sight and bind his speech. Pretend is the dance, the wealth charades. A thousand fearful memories quickly fade of the noble patient on whose right gifted seat sits mother of dust, the hypocrite bane of deceit. And then the figure just kind of falls into a pile of clothing and you can hear the mask clattering down on the ground. We're going to get that in writing, right? Yep, you are going to get that again. <laughs> okay, thank good. you, thank you. I feel like Sarayan, um, not knowing what she's just witnessed entirely um, and wondering if it's still part of a performance, like begins like clapping <laughs> and then slowly like looks around and realizes that no one else is clapping and like... <clears throat> So it seems that the danger has passed, correct? We yes. are no longer it is threatened. Completely okay. quiet. You only hear maybe um the ever so slight creaking of the rope rigging um of the fly system and the footlights the um uh have mostly gone out. There is one single footlight flickering from whatever gas is illuminating it, just with a um, soft little fiery crackle. And that is the only sound in the theater at the moment. Let's not overstay our welcome. Uh, Prion, maybe let's grab those costumes and just get the fuck out of here. I, I think so as well. Maybe back to the ship and let's go. Oh, well, we gotta stay, haven't we? Yeah, we're we're not quite done here, but we'll at least grab the costumes and head somewhere that's not as webby. Aye. Sorayan grab- starts going like yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And before Sorayan starts kissing anyone else. Aye. Yeah. I'll, uh, you two all right? I Your address lips are Melvin still and numb and sort of tingly. He could live. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember there being like fancy cloak that that's all you do need to wear with armor. I remember you saying yes, that. Yes, um, a cloak, a sash, some things that would over polished plate mail look um, potentially appropriate. I will take there is also a grand robe befitting of an archmage. Okay. Does and... it look like Melvin will fit in it? <laughs> Or rather, the other way around. Like, is he going to drown in it? <laughs> Probably. That's you know, an even better look, though. It, you know, he might... Uh, I'm trying to think of an example <laughs> of uh, of that. But yeah, he might swim in it just a little. But um, okay. we, we'll, it'll, we'll pin it. it'll most fine. likely function. <laughs> yeah. Well, he can't swim anywhere else. He might as well swim in his clothes. Yeah. I don't really like swimming, guys. We're going to have to address that. <laughs> Got him. One, one, Got one him. step at a time, kiddo. Um, all right, so we'll we'll just bag up those costumes and skedaddle, I guess. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> what about that mask? That what? The mask. The mask. Which one? The one that the fell one to that the floor. clattered to the ground? Oh, I definitely missed that. Elena missed that. Sorry. Yeah, let's go look at that. <laughs> Sarayan pulls out Wave and approaches the mask with Wave pointing directly at it, assuming it's some horrible, not sacrilegious uh, item. Um, I, I would recommend not touching it directly. I'll, I'll summon oh, well, up a mage hand. That's why Wave is touching it. I'll, I'll summon up a mage hand and... Let the wizard do okay. it. Yeah, not sacrilegious at all. Not sacrilegious <laughs> looking. Oh, um, it puts it on. Give me one moment. I will, uh... <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Great, I can wear it to the party. <laughs> God, I could be charmed again. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, while, while Peter's uh, pulling that up, there, there's a book that I read when I was very, very young where the main characters end up going to some town where everyone wears these like animal masks. And um, they end up like being hypnotized into like joining this party and like wanting to stay in the town and like the masks start to like attach themselves to their face. And ever since we saw the masks on these people here, I'm like, I've been like having that flashback in my brain. Like, nope, I don't want to put a mask on here. (laughs) Sorry, attached to my face. face. Nope. <clears throat> that good. sounds That's fun. Good. Uh, I'm almost there. Vamp for me. Um, so, Sarayan, uh, she begrudgingly, um, kind of like toddles up to Melvin, staring at the ground, shuffling her feet. <laughs> um, are you? Are you okay? And she's not even looking at him as she says it. She's just kind of um, feigning. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm doing all right. Are Are you okay? Yeah, but well, I feel like I can't tell you anything now because I don't know if it's gonna get put in your diary or not. It it it's a travel log, but I understand. Um, I I'm, I'm sorry about before with the. The poetry. I just thought that it should be preserved, but I understand that you didn't want that. There are just some things that you don't want to remember, you know? Ain't that the truth? Yeah, Mariah knows a lot about that, I think. <laughs> um, but pretty much like what I wanted to say is, I guess, <laughs> that it's all right. And I forgive you. Um, but also, can we just like make a pact that when I tell you stuff that's personal, you don't put it in your journal? But that just stays between friends. Yeah, that's fine. But how do I know if it's personal or if it can go in the journal? I'll start explicitly telling you if it's personal or it can go in the journal. Oh, okay, that that'd be helpful. Okay, so this is personal, and I have a lot to unload because we haven't talked in a while. And I mean, we have a lot to catch up on. But this yes, is the first definitely. thing. Yeah, this is personal. Don't write it down. That horrible spider guy stole my first kid. Oh, this the spider woman stole mine too. Oh. It wasn't very nice of her. No, are your lips still numb? A, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I feel like my mouth is just real heavy. Does it look normal? I was a little swollen. Um, <laughs> I, I I found that it was difficult to pronounce the the words to make my magic earlier. Well, it looks like you did a pretty good job. Yeah, I I, I managed to get them working, but it was a little difficult. Right. Um. So are we friends again? I'd like to be if that's okay with you. Yeah, like, and Saran extends <laughs> a webbed hand. Prince is looking at you. Are, are, are you doing that on purpose now? No, oh, my mouth. <laughs> I forgot that it was. No, it's only like two seconds ago. My mouth is no. All right, can we not just leave these two here? Uh, no, I, I find you. I second that. I What's feel more? a certain degree of responsibility to make sure they don't die a horrible death, so... Yeah. Let's not leave them. I, I'd like not to die a horrible death. Thank you, Mariah. Thanks, Mariah. You're welcome. Hey, their lips are going numb, but my brain's going numb. <laughs> Put some ice <laughs> on it. Oh. Put some ice on your brain. Start with? <laughs> <laughs> so the mask, Peter. <laughs> Yeah, do you see yeah, it? I wondered if we'd vamped <laughs> Yeah, <it up. laughs> I see it. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. Okay. And uh, yeah, bells you, and that's all? what it is. It's almost 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 like a full complete helmet rather than a mask. It's kind of okay. you, can, you would have to take it on and off over your head. Uh, as I bring the uh, the mage hand over with it, I very I, I tilt it so Ooh. I can look inside and I'm looking to see if there's any adhesive in there. <laughs> 
Was um, there? Was that what they were wearing too? Or was no? It was just that one by lady. A cloak? Okay. Yeah, oh, just the one. Uh, make an investigation check. Whoever is investigating. Mm. Okay. W- would you like some help with that? Yeah, sure. Or, would you or, like? Some I mean, help you can make that? your own roll, dude. You should just make your own roll. It's fine. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'll take a dice. look as well. Well, okay. <laughs> I've rolled a natural oh one, so. No. I guess I'll be rolling my Kraken dice for the rest of this session. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. I've only critted on Kraken so dice. What, what did you guys roll for your investigations? I rolled a nine. I, I, I've got an eight. Um. Yeah. Regular mask, porcelain front, um, clean, completely clean inside. It, um, uh, M- Mariah, maybe we should take it back to the ship and I can identify it there. Yeah, sure, that'll be fine. Okay, sounds good. Do you want, do you want to put it in the, the bag of holding? Yeah, yeah, I'll just put it in there along with the other mask. Um, so... We have three costumes. We still need to outfit the rest of us. Um, I believe there was another location. DM, that is that correct? A somewhere kind of off near the edge of town that people don't like to go to because it's like not fancy enough or some shit like that. It, it, it's called kind the of. Three Odd Gables. Right. Very odd. Yeah. Um, I have a question before we go. Hmm. Um, is my outfit okay? I keep what I'm wearing. Is it? Peter? I mean, I did get berated and made fun of. <laughs> so I don't know if I should if I should uh the, trade out well, my so costume. Yeah. Saran's is you think it could potentially pass. It's strange, but it might so be she. just bold enough a fashion statement to work. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's press on then. So you have the text of this, by the way, the um, yeah. omen, yeah? I'm, uh, I've am i written it down. I'm, as, I'm as we're heading as well. out, I'm definitely like turning that over in my head about as many ways as I can. Melvin definitely recorded with. it as he was listening to it in his book. Okay. It's like one of them people at the the trials, like right? just like type super fast. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. One of them people. <laughs> one of them people. One of the one, of, the, one folks. of those. <laughs> All right. So to the gables. Leaving um, Red Widow Theater. You exit into an area known as. Widow's Walk, which is sort of the um, least wealthy area of Dementlio. It's beginning to get closer to dusk now. And um, people are about in the same way um, selling wares um, or just sort of strutting about. You then see as you're passing through this neighborhood, a group of children that are kind of running around, um, playing with each other. And a couple of them are um, having a little bit of a um, dance. It almost looks like a mock mockery of a formal dance that they're doing. Um, but Macarena. look closer. Oh, if I could take away inspiration. Sweet Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jokes on you, I have none. <laughs> um, Negative I'm inspo. Untouchable. Disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. They're uh, doing the mockery. No, they're actually v- performing some rather intricate steps for children. And they're kind of singing this... Um, little song as they go around that sounds like a nursery rhyme um, they're all dressed up nicer than you would expect basically urchins to be you know going around and you hear um hear their song um sort of echoing through um 
uh, that they just say, uh, we are not poor, we are noble, can't you, er, we are noble, can't you tell? Dance we now till midnight's bell, twirl and twist and bow, we must carefully now or you'll end up dust. My belly is full and my purse, it's fat. My house has never seen a single rat. Red death comes never for... Red death... <laughs> Shit. Oh, why was I going? <laughs> Red death never comes for one like us. To leave us dried up like an old corn husk. As they're singing this little nursery rhyme as they Harmony. dance about and perform these... <laughs> Strangely intricate and coordinated dance moves. Melvin, did you get that down? <laughs> How pastoral. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing very... Yeah, but Mariah, I, I did get it written down, thanks. Peter. So the te uh, text I'll post it again, but is We're not poor, we're noble, can't you tell? Dance we now till midnight bell. Twirl and twist and bow we must. Carefully now or you'll end up dust. My belly is full and my purse it's fat. My house has never seen a single rat. Red death never, uh, red death never comes for one like us to leave us dried up like an old corn husk. Well, either they're just incredibly creepy or they're begging us to rob them. Hey, Melvin. Maybe uh -oh. I'm... Yes, Mariah. Where'd you say that liar's dust was from again? From here somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I, I heard that too. I'm a little worried now. I'm praying to God those are not the same thing. I yeah, have... it kind of sounds like they are though. I have a question. Mm. Do you guys think that uh, the... Uh... The cord husks, because they're so red death. I was like, what could that be? And then I was like, what? Is that? <laughs> Do you think that they're getting drained of their blood? I, can you speak up a little bit over your thick lips? <laughs> red blood? <laughs> <laughs> they think they're getting drained of their blood. The red death? Do you think they're getting drained of their blood? Like, like cord husks? I mean, I don't think <gasps> cord husks have blood in them unless I misunderstood classic earth biology but yeah i don't know um peter does the term red death mean anything to me either a, a, a oblique mention in a history book somewhere or something like that um trying to Make a, um, make a history check. All right, rolling my crack and die. I've rolled a total of something. History, uh, seventeen. Oh, seventeen. Um, actually, no. Of all the um, enemies or something, um, it's it's a little bit generic of a term. It doesn't ring a bell as something mm -hmm. you've seen before. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's not as simple as a vampire that stalks the streets at night. What else could drain people like a cord husk? Magic. It's just a kid song. Should we be too worried? Um, kids learn from their parents. They might not understand the context and the full depth of what a situation is, but they're going to take what they hear from the people around them and spin it into things that they can understand. It's, it's a pretty common um, uh, happenstance that um, children will make uh, nursery rhyme songs out of really dark materials. It's true, or it got passed out. Like, there was a horrible, frightened um, massacre that we all used to sing about. It always seemed kind of weird to me. But it was a way for us to learn history without having to actually learn about the history that was wrong. 
<laughs> also, don't you don't you remember that other lady who didn't get an invitation? I can't understand it. Watch it. Okay, <laughs> okay. So he's asking about the other lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna massage those lips for you in a minute. <laughs> Would someone cast less restoration on her, please? Um, Help me. Uh, the the lady who you uh, don't don't you remember the lady who didn't get an invitation who um broke down in tears screaming that she didn't want to die yeah i remember that yeah I that kind of sounds like something that could leave you as a husk insulting me well it, yeah. let's let's just get to the gables as fast as we can uh, okay. maybe not linger out here longer than we need to. So you continue on and all the way down the road. You can see tall trees past some of these last homes and structures. Uh, the road clearly ends disappearing into the woods but just before you get to said woods there is a um little stretch of cobblestone road with three crooked houses kind of leaning next to one another uh, you can smell burning of maybe a forge or some firewood in the back um, there seems to be a common courtyard behind these three homes and out front um sitting on a uh a barrel and seeming to be working on a bit of uh needlepoint is a, a woman in probably just almost the plainest dress that you've seen since you've been here in dementia it would be completely average dress anywhere else but here it's suspiciously non-ornate and this is um what the area looks like she kind of sits and looks up to the rest of you and then back down and then looks up You know, you've reached the end of the road, right? Aye. We've reached our destination, I think. Um, good evening. Um, really? Hail and well puts met. down the needlepoint <laughs> and stands up and um, kind of brushes herself off, straightens the apron that she's wearing, walks towards all of you. You can see a very Brain subtle point to her deeply. ears as if she's a... Um, uh, maybe half elven or of some sort of elven descent long auburn hair kind of cascading past her shoulders and just a nice um, necklace uh, silver with some turquoise beads on it and she returns your bow just a bit Saray and then says all the way down to the odd gables then hmm? well what is it we can uh, help you with then you're well, not from here, uh, no? No, we uh, just arrived today from up north and uh, find ourselves in a bit of a sticky situation. Uh, got an invite to a party. Not apparently well-dressed enough. Uh. So we've got... <laughs> but I didn't find that part surprising. I... <laughs> Is that rude? Uh. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I wow, I totally lost my track. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We got invited to a party, and not we're everyone. Oh, and we have <laughs> we, we have about half the group covered already. I think there are three, maybe four of us who are still in need of something. So we were sent your way. That's uh, that's. I'm impressed that you came all the way down here. Most would uh, stoop so low, but uh, you know, we are humble, but we can 
we can make something work, I think. Uh, who is in need of... Uh, I don't see any of you necessarily being ready, except for you, of course, gesturing to Saran, who's got her, I think, complete get-up going. Um. That will uh, definitely draw attention. Um, in a positive well, way? In the mental attention, as long as this is not um, attention to threadbareness, any attention is good for the most part. Also, I have a quick question. My friend and I got kissed by spider people and our lips are really numb. Do you have anything to help with that? Oh. It's pretty annoying, I gotta say. Uh, I mean, we don't usually sound like uh, this. <laughs> yes, I can uh, hear that very well. Uh, Giselle! And uh, she kind of <laughs> oh leans into the, w goes into the window and leans in. You can hear her having a soft conversation and then she takes out um, kind of what appears to be a small bowl that has some sort of ointment in it. It's a little mortar and pestle and she's kind of grinding away. Come here, my dear. So Rayan approaches, lips like extended. Ah, like, blah, blah, blah. Just part your lips normally, don't pucker. This is what like. And she kind of rubs this um, uh, brownish looking um, paste across them. Um, <laughs> you feel a initial burn actually, almost like uh, almost like cinnamon, like uh, or something with too much cinnamon in it or cinnamon spice. And um, but then it kind of subsides. You feel warmth, like intense warmth like an icy hot warmth that counters burning. that initial cold and then it starts to feel normal and she hands you a little cloth and says, eh? to wipe it off normal. and you my boy I thank fuck for that <laughs> you too okay. and she does the same thing rubs this sort of <laughs> hot spicy paste on your lips and then hands you a cloth to wipe it away looking good Melvin <laughs> Uh, that, that feels much better. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs> You're very um, pretty. And she then removes what was just kind of a pretty normal mask. She just kind of takes it off and you can just see her sitting normally. It's almost strange. The amount of time you spent here with these masks, you're used to each other, but this is one of the first Dement Liu's faces you've seen the entire time you've been here. It feels weirdly intimate, like surprising to just suddenly see someone's face. And- um, Oh, she's pretty, damn. That's what I was saying, she's so pretty. She's a hag. Shit. <laughs> what an ogre. Excuse me? What? Boy, was out of character, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's say it was in character. What happens then? So, <laughs> we are needing some fine clothing then for tomorrow Correct. night's event. Yeah. I think based on our recent acquisitions, I need clothing. Talise needs clothing. Doesn't Anaris need clothing? Uh, I think Nene is gonna vibe well with that black dress that we just picked up. Oh, sorry. It's got feathers and stuff all over it. it yeah, does. it looks good. I just, re I, sorry. The Calvin's costume was designed for a incarnation, an incarnation of the Raven Queen, so um, oh. it fits. Dang. Um, and just to make sure I understood, uh, Prion, you were <laughs> saying that you just want to polish your armor and find a cape? I we've got one of these capes and a sash. That would be my armor. Okay. Do. So that's what he needs. Um, but it sounds like Talise and I, unless Talise wants to wear the other armor, would the other armor fit her? The thing we found uh, wasn't a set of armor. It what? was just the the stuff along with the armor. Really? Yeah. Totally there was like a fake set of that. armor that it was draped around. Um, oh. Like a sort of lordly accoutrement to go along with um, full armor. Oh, so that's what Prion should wear then. Yes. Okay. So Prion's covered. Melvin's covered. Nana's really covered. Literally. Um, 
Nether can look like whatever she wants, and also she's sort of in the ether, so yeah. Um, yeah. Nether has wandered off. Yeah. Yeah. She's like. So yeah, it's just it's me and Talise. Um, okay. maybe some adjustments to mine. Yeah. For size, because I'm I'm not very good with the needle. Ah. Uh, <laughs> that's yes. We can um, we can do this easily. <laughs> now your friend here. This should be easy, but you. Ah. You're a bit of a mystery. I don't see. They're looking at you, Mariah. I don't uh, see. Well, what I normally would. Ah, why Excuse don't you me. all come in for a moment? <laughs> Look around what? at Nene, hey, like, what the fuck just happened? Um, like and you can see. So, um, a another woman is inside. Uh, there are some herbs hanging, drying from a rack. I'm a beautiful. Uh, sort of roasted meat smell kind of emanating from within here. The inside is humble but comfortable. Um, nothing looking too fancy or too um, or too threadbare or anything. Just I think it's like a hobbit hole basically. It, it means comfort. It's uh, the woodwork is sturdy but not ornate. The cushions are um, soft and it's just kind of the right temperature in here. The Giselle, who you see, kind of takes Talise off and um, starts kind of doing some measurements um, around uh, her and then takes her off into another room to um, start putting together what would be an outfit. The rest of you, would you like something to drink or anything like that while I work with your uh, friend? Uh, excuse me, what is your name? I'm Mariah. What was yours, by ah, the way? Yeah. I don't think we caught that. Genevieve. Pleasure to meet Genevieve you. Genevieve and Giselle. Um, are you I... sisters? We are, yes. Oh my gosh, all of my sisters are also, our names begin with S's. I'm Sarayan. Ah, that is nice. Our Thank other you. sister does not have a name starting with a G, but you know. Do you dislike her? Does we have a H? <laughs> Her name is Marie Laure. Oh, we do not dislike her at all. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm fine for for drinks, but I would like some information if you can provide some. We're a little bit confused about this place generally. It is a very confusing place, full of confusing people. Uh, yeah. Well, perhaps. Um, then perhaps Mary Law can take care of uh, Mariah here, and I could stay and answer some questions. That that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like that a lot. Also, what is your what is your beauty regimen? Because you're you're very pretty. Oh, very sweet of you, dear. We try to stay close to the woods. We do not pretend to be anything we're not. And when I look in the mirror, look in the spring and see myself, I, well, try to tell myself I'm beautiful and. That's it, that worked. I'm gonna start doing that. <laughs> that is you a should. lot of self-induced positivity. Mariah, I think maybe you could benefit from nope. being positivity. <laughs> <laughs> I like I right, reach trying. out and like actually like put a <laughs> finger over her mouth. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she whimpers. So a third woman comes in and then gestures you, Mariah, to uh, into a back room. All right, follow, All right. keeping a close eye on my surroundings. Cool. All right, we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, Genevieve sits there. Uh, Melvin, uh, looking at you, offering, uh, she's, you can see her starting to make some tea regardless to serve all of you. Uh, whether or not you take some is up to you, but she will be making some regardless. I'll take some. Um, nice. Well, we've just been raided by Fable 42 for 12. Hello, Fablers. Penny Dragon Games for 11. I think I dropped wow. into Penny Dragon Games' chat earlier. Did you have a guest DM on? 
think it was the same. But welcome anyway. Thank you very much for the raid, guys. Much appreciated. Welcome. Please for the yeah. giveaway. Yes, please. Welcome. Exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. You may need to be here in a, for a few minutes to get the requisite gold if you're a brand newcomer. But oh, as soon as they follow, people that follow oh, get the gold straight away. Nice. So, oh, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Uh, very good. I did not know. So, uh, yeah, so Giselle, uh, excuse me, uh, Genevieve sits there in front of you, just looking about, um, putting some tea in front of all of you. Now, what is it, uh, what can I help you with? Um, well, we're a little bit confused about what's going on here. It, the, there's these masquerades, and everybody seems to want invitations to them, and it almost seems like it's the end of the world when people don't get invitations. And we're just wondering what the what the punishment is for not attending the masquerade. Uh, I've on the never way been over, to the masquerade some, myself. On the way Are over, we heard some children you? singing about being turned into old corn husks by something yeah. called the Red Death, which is weird. kind of concerning. Uh, there is some entity it uh, haunts the widow's way and the poorer parts of town always the top of the aristocracy most educated the wealthiest never seem to fall prey to it but well Nearly every week, multiple times a week, you will hear the cries of widows or widowers or orphans who find, uh, well, find their loved one dried up like a husk. So it the Red Death, everybody? they call it. Some claim to have even seen it. Yeah shadowy spirit or something with a white mask and red cracks in it like uh, like a, almost like a, um, a a whirlwind of dark dusty fog or something with the mask leaves them dried out and empty of their spirits. Um, oh, so, when you say spirits, do you mean like actual spirit? Like their soul? Ah, I do not know that. Um, but they are quite without life. wonder why it's called the Red Death. At this, um, she will go on with this questioning. Um, Mariah, as you've been led into this back room, you see uh, bits and pieces of clothing kind of scattered around um, a uh, working area. There is a mirror that is kind of a uh, alcove mirror that you would use to um, examine uh, with a little step stool there for hemming. Um, what you would expect in a uh, tailor or seamstress's shop. And she looks at you for a bit and kind of looks up and down. Um, I think I know the beginnings of what you need. It is very, um, I have something, but the dye is still setting. If it hits the sunlight or lantern light, it will um, ruin the. It will ruin it. It needs to stay in uh, darkness for at least a little bit. Um, but at least uh, until it sets. If it fits, it will be perfect. But um, will you be able to get dressed in the dark? Do you think? You're muted. You're me for David. David's yes. like, pick that up. <laughs> I'm very loud. Um, yeah, I, that should be fine, I guess. Good. Okay. And she pulls aside this curtain 
and gestures you into a completely pitch black room. Oh, sweet Jesus. And then... Um, Wait, I have dark vision. Why am I wearing? <laughs> yeah. So it's very gray. It's kind of odd in here. Um, it's even though tough for you to see, it almost looks like the walls are just shifting and shimmering a bit. You think you can see a rope that's kind of sitting, maybe a drawstring for one of the curtains just kind of <laughs> looks like it slithers away. And then she quickly hands you some clothing, um, a blouse and then some things. And then she asks you to, um, you know, un undress the rest of the way. And assuming you are willing, she will put on some clothes that are just kind of hard for you to see. They're, the, the color is obviously gray because of your dark vision, but they're not obvious. They look like just baggy pants and just a regular jacket, something you, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to you, but, um, she tells you to put them on and ask, uh, I promise it will need a little bit of uh, fine tuning, but it will be fine. Do you let her dress you, I guess is the uh, question. I try first to figure out whether I'm putting on, it, 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 you said it was pants, right? Yes. Okay, then then we're Gucci. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah, they are pants. There is like a jacket to, to it, um, mm -hmm. and which you're a little bit surprised by. And for a few moments you feel almost like something in this jacket sort of moves. You feel like your skin crawls for a few times. For a moment, you could swear there were at least three sets of hands on you kind of moving around. And then suddenly she whoop, slips out of the um, little changing booth. And then you can hear her say, you can come out now. All right. See if you like it. Up on it. Mariah, um, as you emerge and step around to this mirror, you are bedecked in something that Mariah would find absolutely splendid. Do you care to describe <laughs> what that would look like? This is exactly what Mariah would envision. Um, hold on. I totally have a reference picture that I'm going to look at. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, there's, um, this, uh, long, uh, pair of pants, um, and kind of a creamy color, um, that cinch up high at the waist, um, and a jacket that is in a uh, slightly darker fabric and lined with something that shimmers in a color that you can't really pick out what it is um and uh it's very very comfy and it has pockets <laughs> <laughs> very cool she kind of looks at you you know tapping and her chin says, i there is something missing i could see all of this and my sister saw it too but there's something else you feeling okay Uh, about as okay as any day. It's kind of been huh. a weird one, but yeah. There's something missing. Why don't about. you return to your friends? Uh, I will watch and try to think and find something. Oh. I'd, I'd stutter a little bit and head back out. Yeah, and the uh, pants are not baggy they're you know fitted and whatever you emerge in it seems to have completely transformed as you exited the booth um you have no idea how you how what you put on became what you are wearing but you kind of feel like a million bucks dressed in it Raya, did you tell yourself that you look pretty in the mirror because it seems like you you feel like you look pretty is there is there another mirror in here? Uh, not in, in the, the main in the room, room but in. um, they could uh, you could probably find just like a regular hand mirror somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I I find one and I look it up and I kind of put it down, like angle it slightly, and start like gathering my hair back into like a ponytail and let it sit there. Yeah, that's not half bad. 
that's a great place to start. You already look better than you did before. She's Thank missing some you. things, though, isn't she, Giselle, Genevieve? Yes, I believe so. Uh, they all kind of, the three of them, all stare at you for oh, a moment. And then <laughs> Serene kind of... also sidles up across her arms and starts <laughs> looking up and down Mariah. <laughs> I I've heard that good outfits have accessories and I don't think my hat's going to cut it tomorrow night so maybe that's yes yes sir what what about a tiara not my vibe <laughs> he looks excitedly towards the three sisters <laughs> no. they kind of shake their heads um, no you're right that was a dumb idea We'll find, uh, we'll find something. Um, Marie-Laure, uh, Giselle, see what you can bring. Um, and Genevieve stays there and um, continues to speak uh, with you all. I wanted to bring um, Mariah back in to uh, be involved in the questioning about part exactly what's going on. So um, you've probably oh, just overheard this conversation about the Red Death as yeah. well. Uh, GM, I wanted to make an insight check on the person we were talking to to see if this is first-hand knowledge that she's trying to pass off as second-hand. Was it Genevieve that we were talking to? Uh, no, yes. the other one. Genevieve. Oh. Mary, whatever. Well, Marie Marie Lola, I thought, Marie Lola. went uh, to okay. help Mariah, didn't she? I think so. Genevieve stayed. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, did she? Her, okay. Yeah. Doesn't really matter, but yeah. So <laughs> Genevieve will... Uh, True. Yeah, you can make an insight check. Okay. On the crack and die, I have rolled an 18 plus a lot. Four, so 22. 22. So you're trying to see if it's a... Um... I'm, I'm, I'm sort of suspicious of these three and think they might actually be behind this incident. So I'm trying to gauge whether oh. they're making up these behind stories to try to hide that death? fact. Her um her reaction actually seems um totally legit to you. Um she seems okay. uh concerned by it. Um you don't get the sense that she fears for her own safety, but that she thinks it's something tragic that happens to people and it's uh you know, she there's a somber tone in her voice when she talks about the orphaned widows and widowers that are um created because of this. So I, I overheard some of the beginning of this conversation. Um, I say as I'm kind of like playing a little bit with the unfamiliar sleeves of my outfit. Um, two things. So does that mean that all of this extra finery, panache, etc., is that put on to, I mean, not just to get the invitation, but to ward off? The Red Death make it seem like they're not an appropriate target? Or is it just for this invitation? Right, because it only targets the poor. They may go hand in hand. If you are given an invitation, you are the upper crust. You are. Well, I don't think it happens very often, if ever, that uh, an invitee to the ball is killed by the Red Death. So you don't know either way whether there's some sort of inherent protection about the place. It's just the seal of approval of wealth. Has there anybody ever been anybody who got invited but didn't go? Who later, or who died then? Ah, uh, everyone goes. If they're invited, as far as I know, um, I can't recall. Okay. But it's possible. Oh, and what? Sorry, go ahead. I will say that there's, a, as far as it being safe, the aristocracy in that ball has its own um, dangers. Uh, Not surprising. They usually do. As the rhyme goes, you know. Uh, um... Uh, twirl and twist and bow we must carefully now or you'll end up dust you know I, I did want to ask about that as well actually I was curious um 
the dust that's mentioned in that that nursery rhyme. Um, liar's dust. Yeah, ah. liar's dust. Um, can you can you do do you know anything about that that you can share with us? I'm curious about it. Um, it's it is... purely an academic interest, of course. Uh, He's really academic. Sure. What I can tell you is it is terrible thing taken from the urns of dead aristocracy. Grave robbers are the origin. And, well, they sell it for a great amount of money to pass us through. I've heard it's worth quite a lot to people uh, elsewhere. Both Mariah and Melvin, you know this to be true. It is very, very valuable. Yeah. Get it, guys. Is it what makes it so special? Isn't it just the the, the ashes of of the aristocracy? It's not. It's not. It the can bodies, be. Is it? it can be used in spellcraft. Oh. So in in the nursery rhyme, it says that you have to dance or you'll end up dust. Um. Does that mean that people who don't dance at the uh, the masquerade are killed? I couldn't tell you, actually. I think that affair is, well, all too unpleasant and such a fake facade. I, we find it distasteful, so we stay here. Can I tell if she's lying? Sure. seems to be telling the truth um just a, out of curiosity um the woman who hosts this Cedric Denaire, does she hmm. go by any other monikers um the duchess uh yeah. do... she will Could think you recite her full titles for us please for a moment. <laughs> All of them? Uh, from memory? <laughs> Is Waldo, De La Rosa, De La Tomba, De La Blah 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 Santa Maria, Blah 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 So, her, uh, no, they will say no, they will kind of shake their heads. Um, she is just simply Duchess Cedra Donaire. Hmm. But, um, Does she have any no relatives? one doubts her, uh, her eminence. Yeah. Does she have any relatives? None living. The uh, former duke is past. How long? A few years ago. Yeah, okay. maybe f mm. five to ten years. Um, mm. She was... Well, the whole inheritance of that, of that uh, duchy was a little bit strange. Um, the memory is foggy even to the, those who keep the histories, but... Um, she is the rightful heir. Heir Donair. <laughs> to the heir Donair. Um, do we have any other questions, crew? Um, I, 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 I do when it's, when it's my turn to talk. <laughs> Go ahead. I gesture. Oh, thank you. Um, so we talked, we talked about the, the dance. Um, is there like choreography we need to learn or is it like a specific dance that they do 
Also, do we look fancy enough to go to this thing? I know you've never been, so you don't really know. Um, but with, you've been around, it looks like. Talise, um, in a new outfit and with the rest of you all having your current ones, you think you think that you're in um, good shape. I mean, I know Serene looks like a billion uh, bucks. <laughs> do do, do uh, we need um, masks? Yeah, but- Oh yes, the masks, but also the choreography. I think it's important. Ah, uh, is it like a court dance? We do need masks, and the choreography. I'm sorry to say, it would take you quite some time if you want to study it the traditional way. There is choreography, but you're going to have to adapt and improvise. Um, I cannot, like a- unless any of you are professional dancers, it would be a difficult <laughs> study. Yeah, actually, weirdly, I am. <laughs> I uh, don't fit that in. in. <laughs> <laughs> we could find you some masks, too. Um, there is the matter of payment. I was about to ask. You've done us a great service, and we clearly owe you. We try to exist sense. outside of the mental use. Well, the excessive way. I would ask a favor of you, we would. Our mother had a beautiful brooch. And, well, we were helping a friend of ours. Um, Well, we thought she was a friend. Uh, We get to the ball. And we used it as part part of her outfit. I need you to take it from her and give it back to us. Okay. She will most certainly be at the ball itself. How will we know to find her? You will uh, recognize the brooch, I'm sure. It is in the shape of a tropical bird. It is beautiful. Many different gems inset into it. A large pin can be used in hair or to uh, pin up a bustle. I do not know how she will wear it. We'll keep an eye out. Yeah. Yeah, Mariah, this is the best I've ever seen her look, so thank you. And thank you for also sharing your beauty secrets with me. Hmm. I'm going to continue to tell myself I'm beautiful. Um, one question about this this uh, uh, brooch. Uh, do you want it back before the ball? No, no, no. I we'll imagine it, it will be difficult to get it, but um, and she will most likely lock it away after the ball. So, while you are there, please take it from her. Okay. I have a, I, I, is it possible Good. to get her name so I, we don't just walk up and say? Hey, you! Nice brooch! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Ah. Uh, what if she refuses? Her name was... Sorry, what? What if she refuses? Then I'll take well. it. Ah, uh, Neris is... She's the muscle. She would, I um, just feel like you a bit more. She would deserve it. Danielle Moreau is her name. Danielle Moreau. Okay, thank you so much. Um, will will removing the brooch from her person um, injure her in any way, or otherwise Not. negatively impact her directly? Oh yeah, is it a magic brooch? Yeah, like um, will it make her dress disappear or something? <gasps> Melvin, gross! Why did you even think? No, that? I mean like, if, is it, it is a, not, like an uh... illusionary dress and? She's wearing her regular clothes underneath. She will not be harmed anything beyond perhaps minor embarrassment, but that is punishment enough. Yeah, she's a thief. I could also poke her with my trident if you want me to. I would not do that, nor would I... uh, Well. Okay, no, enough said, enough said. Tetra's guards are powerful. I would uh, be careful about, (laughs) about that. It is not the scene um, you wish to make. Yeah, I tend to make a scene just being... Oh, no. I can only imagine she will be fine. 
minorly embarrassed, perhaps, but um, call me petty, but our kindness only goes so far. I would prefer you do it at the ball. That's fair. And then um, you can see two of them bringing out a chest. They kind of open it, just sort of looking around. The lid blocks your view from what's in it, and they kind of look at each of you for a long moment before pulling out what seem to be masks that like perfectly match your outfit. Nice. Giving one to each of you who do not already have them, and then quickly shut the chest again. Uh, Melvin is trying to sneak a peek inside the chest while it's open. Um, yeah, make a perception check. All right, I have a 13 on the die, it's plus like four is 17. It. So 17 total. 17? Um, mm -hmm. You look around, and you, if if there are some masks, there must not be any, or many in there, because you kind of look around and look down in the chest or whatever you can't... Uh, you can't see anything in there. They're reaching deep down into this chest to get whatever it's in there. It's a Mary Poppins and, chest. Um, <laughs> um, uh, the the uh, Genevieve says, good, then we, we have a deal. Can I see anything Indeed. in there? Um, what? Can I see anything in there? What, what was your, I didn't hear. Oh, 22. you made a roll. Yeah. 22? Um, so you can see there's it's a strange thing it almost looks like you can almost see the bottom of the chest looks like your hand disappears just maybe into shadow or something like that um, you can't hear any clanking you can't hear shuffling it's like she just reaches down through the bottom of a chest and pulls out a perfect mask for one of you perfectly matching your outfit and they all do that a few, they both do that a few times before shutting the chest. Um, we have a deal then. Uh, Indeed. Please, I believe, um, you know, the height of the ball is early in the night. I must kindly ask you to do this before midnight. I had wanted to ask uh, as a sort of final question, at least on my end, we've heard this issue of midnight before um, in that nursery rhyme. Does something bad happen after midnight? No, but if you haven't gotten the brooch and gotten out by midnight, there won't really be anything I can do to help you. So please, I see don't linger. Nice. What's going to happen? Ominous. Ah, again, I don't go to the balls. I can't really tell. Just call it intuition. Out by midnight. Sounds fine to me. Ah, and again, mother taught me a few tricks, but um, Mariah, have you lost something in your life? I've probably lost a lot of things. Something that nags at you, something you think about when your mind wanders, something that you dream about, or you find your hand reaching to, even though it's been gone for years. What would you say if I answered that question? She kind of walks towards you, keeping you in an even gaze, getting almost uncomfortably close and staring straight into your eyes. And then her hand kind of moves out and it looks like she's reaching out and about to touch your hip. And then you feel a bit of weight there. Looking down, there's a beautiful scabbard at your hip and a blade sheathed in it. Oh. 
How does that feel? Put my hand on the hilt. It is very similar to what you've lost. You don't feel the same connection, but feels good, I guess. The rest of you see literally a sword almost emerge from um, thin air on Mariah's hip. And shh, a bit of illusion only. But, and she leans close and whispers in your ear, Mariah. That item took part of you with it when it was left. Your time fighting the Fae left deeper scars than you think, and you still bleed. Thankfully, that sword anchors you here, but you will fade into it more and more if you do not retrieve it. That emptiness, that joy that you lack, it will only grow worse. You are bound to it, like it or not, and I cannot help you. And then she leans back and smiles. The rain starts it's clapping at the fruit. magic. Now, you all are looking wonderful. Please, again, both of you, in and out with the brooch by midnight. Everything will just be fine. Sounds good. Is there anything else my sisters and I can do for all of you? Nope, no. I think we're good. Thanks. Bye. I <laughs> about face head out the door so fast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Serene's bowing out the door after Mariah. And as you, you emerge, it seems to be early evening as you leave your tea. Well, probably mostly undrunk. And uh, you see the three sisters just standing right next to each other, watching you intently as you go up the path. Just three totally normal sisters. Hacks are mm-hmm. really crazy, the lot of them. Sisters. <laughs> sisters. Uh, Mariah. Never were there uh, such can, normal sisters. Can we go back to the boat now? I'd like to take a look at some of the stuff that we got. I including would love to be on that the outfit of yours and the sword now. Are we allowed to go back to the boat? It's an illusion, yet? The sword was an illusion, wasn't it? I'd, I'd like to make it stays sure though. Them. It is yeah. actually it's a, she says it's a powerful illusion, but it feels tactile. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's there. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> yes, Pixie. Yeah, that's let's what head I back to the ship. <laughs> to the ship. Oh, to the ship. To the ship. All right, back to the ship you go. Back to the uh, um, port area, the more port area of Porta Lucy, and you are once again accosted by street vendors peddling questionable foods, um, wines, uh, masks, all this, all these types of things as dusk settles on Porta Lucy. Um, back to the ship, your crew is a little bit restless, um, playing card games. There's a sound of bone dice rolling across the, uh, um, the deck floor, and uh, as you approach, they uh, you hear some come to attention and announce your return as they ready themselves for their next orders. All right. Well, I will change back into my regular clothes so that Melvin can have a look at whatever was that was given to me. Okay. Um, and you wanted to look at the uh, fancy mask too, right, Mel? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to take a look at all of that. All right. Okay. Um, and I'll be casting Identify virtually on all of it. Um, you have been doing Detect Magic as well, in case anything else comes up. Y- yeah, I'll, I'll Detect Magic first. I'll virtually cast that on myself and then take a look at all of it first anything that is magical I'd like to identify. 
the clothing um, seems to be obviously emanating very powerful illusion magic. Um, the spell itself, um, I believe... Uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, it's some form of uh, maybe like the creation spell or something like that. You would think. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then DM, can you remind me, is the uh, masquerade this night? No. Tomorrow. Or Following. the next night. Okay, great. Making sure I can get a long rest in. <laughs> so, as long as no one else has anything that they want to contribute before we move on. Um, did you want to add something, Alina? No, I, w uh, what did you say? Oh, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't, like, cutting anybody off. <laughs> no, I, I think we're I just kind of I will add one more thing. Admin. The mask uh -huh. is non-magical. Mask is non-magical. Mask non -magical. is non-magical. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, okay. Sarayan, um, is very worried about the fact that there's going to be dancing at this particular, uh, occasion. And so Sarayan goes up, well, I guess she goes into her room and she closes the door behind her. But if people listen carefully enough, they can hear the sound of boots throughout much of the evening as she is going through the entire catalog of dances that she learned growing up in nobility. And you can hear boots, but also intermittent cursing. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, when, uh, once Melvin's done with the, um, the clothes and such and um... I'll, I'll return them and, and let you know that they're they're mostly safe. Like they're not gonna hurt you or anything. They're they're Good. illusory and this appears to be just creation on its own. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty intense. Yeah. Um are we uh is Nether on the ship? I know She's that not. Sean is not present, but actually. Um, okay. There has for now, kind of conspicuously vanished. Doesn't make me comfortable at all, but okay. <laughs> um, I will spend much of the evening as sun sets um, on the uh, the top deck, and I'll have my violin out. I'm just kind of playing through some tunes, okay, older ones, yeah. Um, so I imagine that Sarayan had like immediately gone to her room and started practicing the dancing. And so by the time she hears Mariah's violin up on the deck, it, I guess, is like dark. And so she goes up and wants to use the music as a guide for her practice. But on her way up, she stops by Melvin's room and is like, knock, 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 and knocks on his door. Uh, hello. Um, I actually think I'm in the bunks, so I don't think I have a door. But oh, great. knock on the she, pillar. <laughs> yeah, she just like peeks her head around the corner. Mm -hmm. Um, um. So I don't know if you have a lot of experience uh, dancing at any sort of um, any sort of noble event. No, yeah, I, I figured not. Um. So. It, it made it sound like if we are good at the dance, then maybe it'll help us not get the Red Death. Um, I know there are other like things that will protect us, but um, what I'm trying to ask is, is would, would, would you help me, would you help me practice? Uh, should, I can try, but I'm, I never really danced before, so. That's okay, I'll teach you. And she runs over, grabs Melvin's hand and like forcefully pulls him out of the bunk. <laughs> <laughs> and drags okay. him up to the deck where 
she teaches him as much as she can about dancing. And again, she's not good at dancing, but she teaches him as much as she can. Uh, uh, make while a, Mariah plays her music. Make a performance check. Oh my gosh, I would love to. <laughs> the dice tell a story. Me, me, me as well, or? Cracking Sorry, dice. She's the one dice. trying to. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so the. Base roll is 11. Let me double check on any modifiers. Plus two, 13. Okay. Um, it's not terrible, Melvin. Uh, you can pick up a few of these steps. Um, there are some that are just a little bizarre and Serene's like, it's way easier if you're underwater, which is not really helpful. <laughs> so- Especially so not for me. And right and left and float and float. And I guess you can't do that on land, huh? <laughs> Frighten dances are hard. <laughs> yeah. If I if I see any struggle, I'm definitely gonna like give a comment or two over. Like I'll just nice. uh, sh- shift your foot that way. That there, there there you go. There okay. Yeah, she no, knows hand a li- hand a little higher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, does anyone else want to do anything for the evening before we close down and you guys get your long rest? All right. I I can't hear you, Chael. Hopefully you haven't been talking. (coughs) Oopsie. There you are. (laughs) Anyway, forgot to unmute. Anaris is going to go find her uh, half-orc boyfriend slash friend and (laughs) see if he will dance. Making a lot of assumptions about that relationship. <laughs> That's why I said, he, you know, slash friend. Will look at you and kind of laugh and shake his head. Um, he does not seem the dancing type. <laughs> um, I forgot as... his name. <laughs> What's his Did name? I write it down? I think is what he landed on. What? Half or Cotty? <laughs> I don't know. Cotty. Was that just in my notes? <laughs> That's hilarious. That Gorlock. Hilarious. His name is Gorlock. Gorlock. That's right. Gorlock the half or Cotty. Gorlock is. Gorlock is. Anyway, um, as, as the oh, um, as the uh, night gets darker and uh colder eventually i will sort of stray away from music that's appropriate for sarayan and melvin to make steps to and that's the best uh, way to put it <laughs> yeah so it's not really dancing make a uh, make a persuasion check versus gorlock here the reticent <laughs> half orc before Also, as you know, he cannot speak because he does not have a tongue. That also means he can't French kiss. <laughs> oh! Huh, that, that is true. Yeah, how yeah, interested sorry. are you Anaris now? is rethinking things. <laughs> She's like, oh, wait, am I supposed to be making the roll? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah persuasion roll for you. Come on, come on, come on. Do I have inspiration? Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him. Do you're going to use his... No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, come on. Oh, that's a 16. All right. Not bad. Um, He kind of looks and he's got his arms crossed over his chest and looks at you narrowly and this little smile kind of um, cracks across his face and then he kind of shifts his weight and then with just one foot does a quick little couple stomps on the ground almost like a bit of a sailor's hornpipe what? just with one foot just dunk, 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 boom, and then uh just shakes his head and smiles at you and then turns to go down below deck where cotty has got moves he's got moves that man that's drink worthy <laughs> and as you all uh then sort of bed down for the evening um in your normal places, the night, uh, there's there's nothing um, exclaimed from the night watch or anything like that. Daenerys, about two minutes in, or two, two hours into your meditation through the night, though, you 
get the sense that you're being watched and kind of come to your senses. You see the full um, form of the black and white jester yeah. with the mask just staring over you. Uh, and you hear it repeat this time just kind of echoing in your mind it's leaning over you you can hear the little bells on the mask jingling emissaries from Saltmarsh I have a message from one who knows what you seek and then he repeats the message again or she repeats the message again Obsidian pacts hold little use to he whose captors do refuse him liberty for healing's sake. They rob his sight and bind his speech. Pretend is the dance, the wealth, charades. A thousand fearful memories quickly fade of the noble patient on whose right gifted seat sits mother of dust, the hypocrite bane of deceit. And then mask just falls, collapses into your bunk on your lap completely empty again. Do I pick Maybe. it up? Like, is it yeah, it's there? sitting there. You can just hold it and it's it's empty. There looks to be an old boat cloak or some sort of um, maybe sail material that had sort of conjured itself into the body that's just now laying limp on the floor. Empty cloth, an empty mask. I don't know what happens if someone puts it on. Yeah. You know, all the concern, but I, she would just investigate the mask and see if there's anything magical connected to it. And um, Looking around, uh, no, there's, it's not magical. It's empty. You can make an investigation check if you'd like. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I think my dogs have gotten into catnip or something because they are losing their minds. Ooh, sounds like fun. <gasps> They're tiny. That is not the right brand of drug for them. <laughs> no, but I don't want us to get his Twitch banned. So, it, you know, it could be other drugs. You never know. Elena, animal drug expert. <laughs> <laughs> I know so many things. <laughs> it is true. 15 is known. Um, as you're looking, you look way in and if you hold it the right way with your dark vision and the light, it looks like there's some writing somewhere on the inside. It says, um, Dominic Donaire on it. <gasps> da, da, da. <laughs> Just that name. I would bring that to Mariah's attention as soon as I saw her. Okay. We will do so in the morning. You guys can rest up. Um, you've got a day ahead of you and then a ball and you guys can figure out what exactly it is you are going to do about stealing brooches and um, going to a ball or not um, as uh, but yes please go ahead and finish your long rests as you guys get an early night Sod. and um, that's where we will take a break Teresa is here oh that's me. <laughs> That's welcome me. back, everyone. Um, <laughs> and welcome back, players. Welcome, Teresa, back. Teresa as Talise, our water genasi Teresa cleric, back. has returned just in time for a um, yes, interesting evening. Back. So the evening has passed. Mm -hmm. The group has assembled enough proper clothing to make it to the ball tonight. Um, some of them through uh, encounters at a theater. Some have been conjured magical clothing by a um, trio of sisters uh, who only want a favor in return, that is stealing a brooch from a particular woman at the ball before midnight. And right. with that, um, uh, I guess I should uh, briefly say, if you have tuned in over the break or you just hanging around, we have a giveaway going on. We're sponsored by Crack and Dice. So exclamation mark giveaway, enter it in the chat, hang out with us. Uh, we will be giving away uh, $25 in Crack and Dice store credit 
um, at the end of the stream. So good to see you all here. Thanks for joining us. Cool. All right, guys. Um, so the morning comes early in the morning, echoing across the waters. You hear what sounds to be a scream of terror. And then mm-hmm. maybe one of a few others accompany it. It's probably five in the morning or so from a oh. different part of town. And you hear that and then nothing more. The morning then comes, the criers, the soft music of Dement Liu resumes and the morning dawns regularly after that. Rian, send your bird, go scout. I'll send my bird, but thank you very much to Diamond Anvil who has redeemed a D20 inspiration with 600 gold. Thank you very much. Damn. Oh, very cool. Thanks. Who, who hasn't got a D20 inspiration? I don't think anyone has it yet. It's been I a bit. Have right. one. Yeah, I, don't think I have one. I have one. I don't. Look at I that. I think we need to re roll. We need to re roll. Go ahead re-roll. and tuck re-roll. that in my pocket. Aw, no. I mean, I hope you have congratulations, a hole in your pocket. Peter. The Thanks. DM wins it. Thanks, Thank guys. you very much, Diamond. <laughs> Thank you. There's guys. a hole in the pocket. Thank We're underneath the pocket waiting to grab. <laughs> there better be a hole, and I'll just swoop it up later. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> Samus. Hell yeah. <laughs> it is all right. So, what do you guys? Uh, what do you do to start out your um, day today? Anything you need to discuss? Anything else interesting? Or any? So, were we? Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Thank you. Were we all aware? I'm sorry. I didn't quite understand. But were we all aware that there was that ruckus? around 5 a.m. was that? Yeah, you all would hear it. It's You kind of got to bed early, so unless you're okay. like super passed out, you would have Probably heard Probably Melvin uh, sort of is, because he's never danced in his life, so. Saran put I'm him through his I'm a pretty paces. frail person, so I'm probably, I probably pretty tough. I probably also did Saran not hear that. Saran carried him over the threshold and deposited him into his bunk. Oh. <laughs> Fireman style, over the shoulder boulder holder. Uh, Pixie's also redeemed a D20 Amazing. with 600 gold. So thank you very much, Pixie. Yay, Pixie. Someone else gets it, Peter. Oh, uh. Not you. <laughs> Go down the line. Up. Oh. And there it is. Thank you very much, Pixie. There you go. Thank you, Pixie. Burr, burr. She blows. <laughs> Um, Liz, did you have anything else that you wanted to follow up on with on that? Yes. Um, so having heard the ruckus, like that would be something that Saran would want to address, but Mm -hmm. that can also wait until we're all gathered together. So yeah, anyone has anything more pressing? No. So what I was, uh, in the morning wanted to gather the team, team meeting. Um, and, uh, there are several things that I wanted to chat about, but I, I think the, uh, issue of this scream in the night is a great place to start. Uh, sorry, do you have a specific thought about the, uh, the scream? Um, what are your thoughts about the painting? Oh, sorry. You're definitely talking to someone. Um, no, it's okay. My brother's (laughs) trying to organize a beverage (laughs) experience. Ooh, Um, highly important. It is. It is. There's a distillery <laughs> nearby we want to try out. Priorities. Um, <laughs> priorities. But uh, so Saran would have. So I'm. I'm imagining <laughs> that it's like we're all gathered in the mess hall. <laughs> we're definitely yeah, having. Yeah, you're kind of waking up for that early morning coffee or whatever, and you hear it. It sounds like it's maybe half a mile away. It's Sarayan far away. Sarayan is only, she just drinks matcha. So someone is I, I making her out. matcha with the powder. <laughs> she looks like oh, powder yeah, matcha. Pretty granola. <laughs> um, with oat milk. <laughs> no sweetener. But <laughs> so, no. Please stop. stop. I, I look at so her weird. with the strangest look as I sip my black coffee spiked with rum. <laughs> I'm really sorry, but that, <laughs> that actually is like one of my favorite drinks at a coffee shop. Much is great. It's fine. It is. I'm only good. teasing you in character. It's it's um, my You could tease me IRL too. It's okay. I deserve it. But okay. so <laughs> great. But so Saran 
would have been um, eating ravenously, as is her way. But then kind of after, I just imagine she shovels food in her mouth. But so it's like, she's like, nom, 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 nom. And after she has um, consumed enough to placate herself, she would have kind of fallen quiet. And then pretty much just apropos of nothing, been like, so um, did anyone else hear the, hear the screaming plus? I guess it was the last night, it was this morning, it was, it was pretty yep. early. Yep. If I would, I would like to have sent um, my bird off the gun, have a look, scout. Okay. Oh, sort of fly off attempt to not get harassed by the other seagulls on the way it had anything to do with like I... all the stories we were hearing about the red death oh probably do you think it's real oh yeah <gasps> well no we'd already talked about that that's not new information <clears throat> sorry I'm still waking up the matcha hasn't kicked in the fuck are you talking about didn't we all decide yesterday that that I mean, like the little children's tale was was based in truth. And oh, then those those pretty sisters. Yeah, sorry, no, I what? I misheard you and thought you were um, early mor- morning insulting me. Um, no, 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 I usually wait to insult you later in the day when we're both wide awake. Yeah, I, that <laughs> makes a lot more sense. Um, yeah, no, there's there's probably a dead husk out there, and um, someone's very upset. And um, no, I'm not really about that. Hey, Melvin, how much of the night did you spend thinking about that poem? Um, all of it that I was awake, which was very little of it because I was very tired after dancing. Mm. I didn't realize that moving around so much could make you so tired. <laughs> it's a doozy, <laughs> man. Yeah, um, these, and while, these while he's saying this, barking. he's actually um, folding little origami fish out of very thin strips of paper. Um... And over the course of 10 minutes, he ritually casts water breathing and pops one in his mouth and eats it and hands them out to everyone else. That Are they goldfish? Good. Does it viciously rip one. out of the side of your, the sides of your <laughs> neck oh, and God, make gills? <laughs> no, this, this is not <laughs> ultra self. <Body> this, is, <laughs> <laughs> this is just water breathing. Oh, it's just water breathing. <laughs> so, it. wait, has Anaris revealed the Dominic situation? Have you, Anaris? Have you told the story of your revisitation yeah as soon as they as soon as we all gathered around and started talking she would have mm-hmm. oh by the way this weird shit happened <gasps> alright so going back to that poem thing I think we know what obsidian pacts are it has to do with the, the, the rocks we've been looking at, right? Yep. Okay. Meanwhile, Saran has taken off a boot and is rubbing her feet, just staring mm-hmm. dead into your eyes, Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a moment to look at you in the eyes and then I put... She's like not even aware that it's weird. She's just like... Okay. <laughs> um, so... Someone is captive here. Let's treat this as literal, boiling shit down, right? Someone's captive. Do you want to, for those who haven't joined oh, it, do, do should you I read it read out? The... Oh, yeah, yeah, do. yeah. Okay. Obsidian packs hold little here, me... use to. Oh, what? I'll do Sorry? it. I'll make a handout for it too, just Ooh, um, okay. Because that makes all the sense in the world. Um, that really way, does. the audience <laughs> can see it too. <laughs> nah. No offense, audience. Should I continue or wait for you to do that? It's a secret. Um, you may... Secret. Keep it safe. There it is. Secret. Secret. Okay. Keep it safe. <laughs> Just curious um, note. So, Obsidian Pacts hold little use to he whose captors do refuse him liberty for healing's sake. They rob his sight and bind his speech. Pretend is the dance, the wealth charades, a thousand fearful memories quickly fade of no- quickly fade of the noble patient on whose right gifted seat sits the mother of dust, the hypocrite bane of deceit. You know, read around those non-punctuated lines. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> anyway. Um, so that Dominic um, situation, Dominic Denaire, makes me think that um, in one way or another, that individual has been removed from the picture. Um, and that may be it's even his right gifted seat, potentially. And that maybe Cedra's there in some sketchy capacity. Um, I had kind of been hinting at this earlier, but I wasn't totally sure that maybe she's even the mother of dust. Yeah, there's which then makes the me, yeah, um, even makes me think that she's somehow related to the generation of this Red Death. Mother of Dust. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that she's, like, somehow orchestrated the whole thing. Yeah. But, but isn't the dust the the ashes of noble well, aristocracy? There's so... the, the creature is... The, the way that the Red Death has been described to us, it is an a shadowy, like, dusty, like, tornado-y spirit that has this mask. Right, Peter? Oh. Yeah, that's true. So the dust is not just the liar's dust, it's also the red death itself. Um, so... And I will say, Jade, Eulak does return to you and inform you that they see um, some uh, people carrying out of a house some corpses which seem to be um kind of like shriveled almost dr like drained of their life force uh terrified expressions on their face and they're kind of stiff and laying there it's not like they've been completely drained of blood but it's that um their, their skin looks just a little bit shriveled up like they have just had the life force you know pulled out of them I tell him to look for any puncture marks on the on the neck. Okay. Um, have him make a quick perception check. Can I look through his eyes to do it? You you don't. So can there's a you, limit to that distance. I don't think All you right. can even communicate with him when he's a certain distance oh, away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, More than so he feet. returns and tells you tells you that. Um, and yeah, they don't look, they do look shriveled, but it's not like completely dried up like vampire victims that you've seen. Um, there's no obvious blood anywhere, anything like that. Oh, I relate anyway, group. carry on. Okay, so everyone's forgotten about him. Thousand Fear Forgotten Vimers, quickly fate of the noble patient, the noble patient who might be Dominic, whose oh. right gifted seat sits the mother of dust, might be Cedra, the hypocrite bane of deceit. Um, okay, so I feel like this is entirely for me. So is Dominic dead? Like, we can confirm. Well, so we don't know. So we, there's a we dead know husband. That the the husband of yeah. Cedra Denair is dead. Cedra we don't know dead. whether that's actually Dominic or whether Dominic is some other individual of the same family. Right. We also don't and actually so know that the husband is dead. We were told the we husband was told. dead. The mask that we found in the theater mm -hmm. um, and the mask of you... last night were similar masks, Can correct? I check the oh, other sorry. mask? Yeah, is I there a name you in the were other told mask? The, also, you were told the Duke was dead. Um, correct. But that wasn't an indication that that was her husband. Ah, it could have okay. been her okay. father. That's, oh, okay. That's oh. good to know. Thank you. That's a good point. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, uh, so, was there a name the, in the? Sorry. The mask. Sorry. The mask in the opera house that we found. Does yeah, that also a name have a name on the inside? Yeah. Is it gone? That's the same one that appeared to. Yeah. Anaris. It seemed to have. Oh, left so it disappeared out of our bag of holding. It, it, okay. it, yeah. It repeated its. Uh, its. Yeah. Recitation. Oh, yeah. That. Okay. So, I, I kind of wonder whether Dominic's alive or at least still present in some way. 
and he's reaching out to us or at least some entity that is related to Dominic because why else would they use his mask? You know? Um, can you, uh, TM, would you allow a retroactive insight check um, for the uh, bit of the conversation with the, the trio of sisters that was referring to the passing down of the estate of the Donaires? Um, I'm wondering if it's supposed to pass down to a male relative and it's odd that it's passed down to Cedra or if that's expected. Um, so we maybe a, a, a history check first um, sure. because yeah. I'll help. that would just tell you about the society itself. Roll again. Okay. Um, history is a 17 total. Okay. Um, <clears throat> going through the, you know, the the kingdoms, the island kingdoms of the uh, Sea of Swords, you know, history, you're thinking banners and flags and blah, 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 notable heroes and, oh, societies. Dementlia's society is non, is not patrilineal uh, succession. So it is, um, it is... In it, eldest child inherits um so it is not uh it would not be unusual if if she was the only or oldest child she would be the direct inheritor of the title okay what's it called conjoin is it conjoinity mm -hmm. or something like that i don't know you 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 got you, you brits have all that history we <laughs> we got freedom over here oh yeah freedom <laughs> Uh, so I also I have a question, um, and it's particularly about it's about the first um, the first first. Mm -hmm. So it kind of seems like whoever whoever is I don't and maybe I'm misunderstanding, but it seems like whoever's causing this sort of this red death or like the scourge or like whatever this is about that he's being held captive. Mm -hmm. and that people are holding him captive for their own gain I mean yeah this for healing's sake is really interesting um, yeah and they rob uh, his sight and bind his speech so they've they've silenced him and held him captive to use well, him for nefarious purposes if they've put this mask on him I imagine it would be kind of difficult to see or hear right right um, can I inspect the mask sure yeah, um, there's uh, Inaris has already made a pretty thorough investigation. She rolled uh, above a 15 on the investigation check. Oh, yeah, so. this was really more just <laughs> Sarayan reaches across the table and begins inspecting it herself. <laughs> Does sure. it actually have eye holes? Um, yeah, they Sarayan? are. Um, oh, sorry. You can see through them. It's sort of a mesh. Can Melvin do his You would not normally be able to see the eyes. Um, it was a history check instead. Oh, I thought, um, I thought you were just gonna. Yeah, uh, yeah I, think I just that's an interesting point. And Sarayan puts the mask up to her face and tries to see if she can see through it, wearing the mask the way that one would wear it. Okay, Sarayan suddenly looks like this at the mask. She kind of uh, <laughs> sits there for a second. Um, I'm imagining a Majora's Mask woman. <laughs> amazing. Um. No, Sarayan, you suddenly you f feel um, coldness on your face, like hard metal, and you hear a um, sort of a metallic click, 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 and you f feel like your skull is being almost constricted for a second. You feel um, then something almost choking you as if something has been like put into your mouth or something like that. Um, like you're being gagged. <laughs> the rain starts to and then flutter. <laughs> it just suddenly vanishes for a moment. <gasps> Is the mask okay. on? No. The mask the, didn't the vanish. Feeling, I was like, the feeling dude. vanishes. <laughs> Excuse me. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm... <clears throat> and Serene grabs a sip of her matcha. And, um, and I'm gonna go to Whole Foods. Sorry, <laughs> baby. So she takes a sip of her drink and is like, 
yeah, it was it was the strangest thing as I as I held because I thought that was an interesting point that if they were wearing this mask that they wouldn't be able to see very well and as I put the mask up to my face I just I felt I felt like I couldn't breathe and and it was cold and I mean it, and then it just stopped almost like something came mm. over me like something is in this mask I almost wonder, and maybe this is obviously conjecture, but um, so actually, let me ask the DM really quick. So we were yeah. given a description of the Red Death, right? Th yeah. That it has a a mask, um, a a white mask with red cracks in it, right? Mm -hmm. Where it was that red cracks? A uh, white eyes mask with red cracks think is, is that described. red cracks where the eyes would be or just a cracked mask um so red fissures in it sort of is the way it would be described okay but i don't know i didn't clarify because it could have eye holes and or not it could just be with i know that's incredibly descriptive um I so, what yeah, but it, it kind of makes me think like, what if all of these people are dying in order to sustain life of others? Yeah. Um, I feel like I can't. Too. Yeah, I feel like in my notes somewhere I wrote down, but I can't find it. I remember some description from a couple sessions ago, maybe about like how things seem to be aging weirdly here. Does anyone else remember that? There was some like weird, like things were getting older or dirtier or things were older than they should be or something like that. Or am I misremembering? Well, I remember I there mean, being what, something like time passing strangely, but I can't remember the details. Like I'm with you, but I don't quite remember what it was. And I didn't yeah. write it down. I remember. There, there was something about things getting dusty. Well, like yeah. in the description of the town, the thing, like the masks that people were wearing were clearly mm -hmm old it, it's not right. some of them even some of them stuff. were old and some people seem to have a be wearing sort of dusty masks especially those two those younger women that you saw right yeah um, some of them seem to be um dusty, well dusty. and so i may just be conflating the two things the two large plot points so far that we've um encountered but so the um oh my god the people back in salt marsh mm -hmm. the poopy ones that we all fought in slaughtered. The Chandlers. The Chandlers. I was like, oh. um, they had something, did they have something to do with the, the Lassic League also? Mm -hmm. Or was, yeah, so I mean, the whole point of their uh, ritual sort of like sacrifice was, wasn't it to like maintain their primacy and things like that? Like, so it doesn't seem that far a stretch mm -hmm. that there would be sacrifice here if the, the Lassic League is involved. To maintain primacy mm. or use or i don't know not necessarily the exact same thing but i feel like there mm -hmm. that could be a tie if we're looking at the classic yeah. league as a as but, an entity but so we do know that there was a tie to the classic league already because we found the mask with the look at that liars show dust it. at the yes on mm -hmm. the sinking ship yes and so my question i guess was for my own remembrance, <laughs> um, what exactly was, was it to maintain their primacy in their town and their position or was it, well, why were they doing what they were doing again? It wasn't really clear as far as I can remember, like what, what their personal goal was, but they had this deal with um, the prime waters where they, um, would send the person out onto sea every right. 25 years. And then at some point the, the prime waters uh, reneged on that. Um, but they seem to have some sort of personal connection to whatever is at the heart of the Thalassic League. And, you know, cause they, they weren't terribly well off, right? Like, I don't know, I uh, guess to be like merchants, like yeah, they owned a significant amount of the prime Property. waters benefited more than the Chandlers did. Yeah, the Chandlers. Right, so they were kind of a conduit for the larger issue. Right. 
Hmm. Um, DM, I'm just looking back through my notes from that ship encounter, and I have mm -hmm. a name written down for Port Alusine. Mm -hmm. Um, Marcel Guinol. Guinol's yeah. garden. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he is the. Yay. Um, you would know just you being here that he's the Lord Chancellor. He is the l most powerful member of the council, what's called the Council of Brilliance, which are the most powerful members of the society. Gotcha. Is it Council of Brilliance? He would just be like, oh, who's the leader of Dementlio? You would be like, that's Marcel Guignol, the Grand Chancellor, you know, kind of like. A N C E or Brilliance mm. plural? <laughs> C E. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, they're calling oh, so, myself brilliant. I, um, I posted a list of locations too, because some of these we just breezed through as well okay. mm -hmm. as we started. So um, just helps you know sort of the layout of the city. Um, Thank you. So we should definitely go to the garden. <laughs> ah, yes. We've been to the Three Odd Gables. Ooh, University of Dementieu. That sounds like something Melvin would like. A nice little yeah. travel itinerary, guys. Port of Lucene um, Opera House, that could be of interest to many of us. Yeah. Oh, we were I just want to throw theater, back in correct? there. We oh, were, sorry. yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to throw back in there really quick that that tabaxi that we met described um, uh, Cedra as the lady in red. Right. Which matched the description that Serene and I got when we visited Kaladek back in Saltmarsh. Mm hmm. Uh, fun fact about this list of locations, um, I see that the uh, Phlegathon Hospital is noted, and um, I have in my notes that the um, Lord Admiral that we met is the most eminent, eminent Chancellor and Vice Chair of the Phlegathon Hospital. It is one of his titles. So ought we to go to the hospital? Well, nice so accent. I think the, the question at this point is like, what's our goal here right we have the the larger goal of figure out shit with the thalassic league but that's sort of vague um so do we want to see if dominic's alive and find him i think like, that's, that's tangible an important place to start is there yeah. a cemetery that we could visit i mean if would he he's being tortured like in your vision he'd probably be in a dungeon somewhere so we're operating off the assumption that he's still alive. It might be worth us spending a little bit of time today trying to confirm that maybe there might be records at a cathedral of just the deceased, potentially, yeah, or, um, or the hospital. If he was sick, he would have been yeah. taken to the hospital. Probably. Um, I also wanted to see, so, you know, we've got a little bit of, t when do we have to be at the party? Yeah, I have to come um, back and get ready. Arrival is a little bit flexible, but uh, okay. I would say, uh, you know, things are in full swing by 9 p.m. Okay. That's pretty so... close to my bedtime. Yeah, we're oh. staying up late tonight, girly, okay? Okay. Drink some matcha. matcha. <laughs> yeah, drink some matcha. <laughs> um, I think the other question is, do we want to try to gauge some of these other important individuals who are most likely going to be at the party. The more information we have before we go in, the better. Better not to be blind. I agree. Like Dominic, you mean? Well, uh... but even the, the lady, maybe? Well, yes, so I there was that like young strange. lady. I mean, couldn't we introduce ourselves first? Just kind of like be where she is? I don't know. Wait, which lady are you talking about? I'm talking about the brooch lady. Oh, the brooch lady. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Danielle? Yeah, Danielle, Danielle Moreau. Danielle Moreau. Yeah. I don't know. I'll we'll just sick Nene on her at the party. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. I got Do this. It. Awesome. You're very frightening. So I think you do a great job. All right. So, where do we want to head this morning? Um, Cathedral? I think it's hospital. Hospital. Probably worth checking the hospital first. Let's go to the hospital. A l'hôpital. Okay. A l'hôpital. the rest of my coffee. 
near the uh chug, cool chug, chug. you guys move your way along and uh Bagatham Hospital is um, quite obvious what it is when you come to it. Um, a large sign actually declares it uh, Flegatham Hospital and Sanitarium. It stands almost like a monolith along the streets. Solid stone construction steps leading up. There are two obvious wings to either side. Some windows open. You, you can see um, humans and humanoids in white peeking out of windows. Some barred with iron bars. Some shut almost completely. A little courtyard out front. A few well-dressed attendants seem to be milling about. Some of them helping someone with a um, beautiful um, metallic prosthetic leg um, sort of training them, helping them along and um, others you swear you can hear a scream emanating somewhere deep within this place but as you enter and draw closer a woman in a white coat oddly enough has these sort of um, epaulets on her uh, white cloak um, they're gray with some silver trim and a little bit of the um, silver tasseling coming just over her shoulders and a few badges that look to be certifications of various different things perhaps and she comes out have you come to Flegathan looking for healing? Yes. We no. would be interested in learning about your services, just in general terms. Well, we heal the heart, the body, and the mind. Hmm. It is one of the preeminent hospitals in all of the realm. Is there something closer I can point you to? Um, I, we hear that you are, um, uh, graced by the support of fill in the blank here with name Melvin. Um, his, <laughs> his grace, Jean-Francois, Duke de Lacanoir, uh, Lord Admiral, the Grand Fleet of Dementliou, High Chancellor of the uh, Third Re-Resurrected yes. Order of the Emperor Lily Navigateur, Extraordinaire <laughs> of the Palace of Enlightenment, Emeritus, Serene Distinguished Bearer Melvin of the Ivory at Home, Most Honorable by... Melvin! Oh, Reading out his titles, sorry. No, you did a great job. Yes. His grace is um, one of the sponsors and his ancestors were one of the founders of the of uh, the sanitarium during mm. the times of the plague. Ooh. Now we are mostly uh, hospital. The plague. During the plague? Did you the say? Plague. Oh yes, it was. That's um, what she said. She said plague. It was. Uh, there was a time uh, not too long ago. Everyone very much fearful for their lives, but uh, well, that was generations ago, at least I think. Yeah. Uh, no. What specifically was the plague, if you don't mind? I'm a bit of an academic, and I'm writing a travel log. You see. Yeah, he took some oh. really embarrassing stuff about me for his travel log. <laughs> we did. do have uh, some... Rain uh, blinks. Uh, <laughs> we do have a uh, relationship therapy sessions available. If... Oh! Mm. And you see an immediate blush of deep coral. It's not <laughs> It's not like that. I, I'm engaged. Please um, tell me the word is actually only part way up your face. Uh, but the plague uh, was uh, sort of a f fever with the bleeding and such uh, awful thing. Yes. Did uh, it start with numb lips? Oh. No, are I you feeling numb lips? No, I got I. kissed by a spider, and he wasn't my fiance. Um. 
Is the Lord Admiral here? <laughs> no, no, no. You see, the Lord Admiral is what he is. He is a sponsor of the place. He's a founder. Yeah. Uh, his position is honorary and advisory. Ah. Um, would you would you happen to have like a records room or or a a records keeper that I could maybe talk to? Uh, you keep a list of the people who died here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. Is. I must ask you a few more details about the nature of your inquiries if you are going to be allowed to look at our records. Oh, well, of course. Anything yeah. you want. We're deep supporters of academic inquiry, and I give Melvin a big slap on the back. <laughs> oh. uh, I'm here it, doing a pilgrimage yes, hey. to learn. And, and I'm working on uh, documenting as much as I can about all of the different cultures of the world and, and all of their intricacies, but uh, mostly I'm, I'm interested in the, the academic side of it, more, less so the writing side of it. Like, I don't really, I probably won't actually publish it or anything. It's, it's mostly for academic purposes. Death um, is, after all, such an important part of life. That was beautiful. He needs to... Okay. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Um, I Making am... It. <laughs> wow. I'm, uh, <laughs> proficient in persuasion, so I, I can also assist. I am also proficient in persuasion. I am If you not. need to roll with <laughs> avantage. I'm happy to roll if that if Peter would allow that. I well, I mean, you are the one who said rolling. it, so it you was, should... Oh, okay. uh, Mariah was yeah. kind of the one leading that, uh, <laughs> that their charge. I just did not know that you were also... Uh, uh, actually, you know, it's probably to... a deception check, too. It's not Well, really, I rolled a uh... natural 20, so it doesn't... Yeah. Well, my modifier is even be, better be, with perception, be, so um, it would be actually a 30 if it's deception. A 30? Damn, yeah. dude. Oh, good lord. It yeah, kind of looks between you. Um, ah, yes, academics. Ah... Uh, Excuse me, I, um, that explains quite a lot about uh, why you are all uh, the way you are. I, I understand oh, Yes, yeah. One moment. Uh, let me wow. get, uh, <laughs> our chief surgeon is in. Let me get him. He can show you around the record room down in the basement. And um, soon enough, you are connected with uh, uh, the chief no. Surgeon um, Pierre Camus, who, is, who leads you into the um, sanitarium itself. The entry room is quite nice, if func if more functional than other places. Um, the uh, uh, receiving room itself is two floors high. You can see there's a small balcony ringing a um, sort of, um, oh, what is it called? A rotunda, uh, you know, with a, um, what is it called that in the architecture that all capital buildings are, the, the sort of domed a cupola? area? Yeah, so there's a cupola kind of area. Um, it looks like there is glass actually above there and like what looks to be office areas ringing the sort of second floor of the cupola. Ooh. And he but leads you then down around the side and into a basement area where he brings you to a, what looks to be a small study with a long wooden table, um, quills, pens and such set up. And he says, I am happy to assist the foreign researchers. Now, what records may I bring you so you may copy and make your notes? Melvin? Serene pushes Melvin forward. Oh, um, well, I'm mostly interested in the the phenomenon of the, the Red Death, but also a little bit in this, uh, the plague that was mentioned by the the, the lady that we met upstairs. Um, the plague? Yeah, that one. Um, and then... The uh, plague. The records are not particularly good. Families were wiped out. The hospital was completely overwhelmed. Uh, we may have some specifically about the nobility, the leaders, and the councils and such. But more that, than that, that I cannot guarantee. That, that, oh, that would okay. be fine. Thank you. Um, and 
generally Around anything those... that's yes. anything that sort of stands out about those uh, major families that is a little unusual would also be interesting. I, I'm I'm always interested to learn about edge cases as well. Uh, things that stand out, I would. It would take me a long time. I'll, it would take me a long time to actually read through them myself. So, um, mm. I cannot guarantee that I can get you anything interesting. Mm. But I will bring uh. you the files that we have from that area, specifically the nobility, mm. and see if something is interesting to you. Yes. That would, would you like great. any Thank tea you. or refreshments or anything? Ah, oh, let me turn up the light. And he actually goes and sort of turns up a few lanterns that are around this room and it really fills it with a very pleasant light. If you would please remain here while I retrieve the records for you, I will be back almost immediately. I would like some and tea, he, please. I have to stay up late is. tonight. And he um, sort of goes to the wall and turns a little thing that kind of rings out like a, um, almost like in a little alarm bell, like, Kring! and uh, uh, soon enough, a that same woman that you saw outside um, after about a minute or so brings you down some tea as he slightly opens a door and sort of tucks himself around it before closing. And you hear him de maybe descending a few stairs and then is out of sight. This place is creepy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Daenerys, this seems like the kind of place you'd like. Thanks for that. Wow. I think. Well, it's just that you always wear so much black and it's dark in here. <laughs> wow. Oh. Sorry. It's about <laughs> five minutes before you hear the door open again, and he comes in, returning with a stack of records, which he places down on the table. This starts a generation before the plague. For those we have documented through the plague and continues for one or two afterwards. Will this be sufficient to your research? Um, so how far toward the current day does this go? We are short maybe 50 years. Oh, okay. Um, I had also said that I was interested in this red death phenomena that seems to uh, be occurring. Eh, you know... Eh, there are those not so well off in the mental year. I think some off to the widow walk and, you know, the laborers, the merchants, they pretend to be more than what they are. And sometimes I think they simply die in the night. That makes absolutely no sense. What about the ones that died this morning? Where did they go? Ah, we are a place of healing. We are not the mortuary. Is there so a mortuary? So where do your dead go? This tea is ah. delicious, by the way. Good. Uh, I do not know where they dispose of them. I believe it is a sanitary way, but uh, that is not... Does Dementia not lying. have burial tradition? Yeah, can we check? Because what? <laughs> it lying. depends on the family. Some of them... Well, some of them are cremated. Some of them are buried. Some of them are taken to the... Cathedral of the Sainted Mother of Tears. Well, we talked about that cathedral earlier, you guys. Yeah. Dirty 20 to see if he's lying. Ooh. Uh, he appears to not be telling the whole truth here. Oh, <laughs> surprise, <laughs> surprise. So nobody's um, here then, no? That it, doesn't seem logical. Mm, Sorry. We occasionally cannot save one, and then we ask of the families how we want to dispose of the bodies, of course. We are the preeminent healing facility in the realm, I assure you. So what but happens when you can't heal somebody? We are somebody? not miracle workers. Hmm? You just... So, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm 
and, and again, delicious tea. Um, but what I'm what I'm hearing is that when you can't heal somebody because you're just the preeminent healing facility, that then that means that if they're unable to be healed, they're sent back to their family. I was ask I was saying when they die, were they ever given back to their families? Uh, of course, if healing is impossible, we will always try to find a cure and um, protect those who come down with the future ailments by researching the symptoms and the ailments. But, um, uh, yes. Uh, one, la one last request, um, and you, maybe you don't have this on hand and that's all right, but if you have a relatively up-to-date um, family trees for the, the major nobility, that would greatly aid my research in, in with this, um, with these um, resources that you've already provided. Also, and Sarayan puffs up her chest. You may not be able to tell, but I myself am from nobility. <clears throat> and um, it's also important for my family's understanding of the history of the people above the waves that we, we have um, a good record of, of their noble families, so we know who to invite to, to things and such. We he don't want to send turns... an invitation to a dead person. <laughs> he turns and looks at you. Of course, that will be provided. Wonderful, Triton thank nobility, you. you say? Yes, Alaranoth. Hmm. That's uh, the Dr. most Dr. special. Dr. Pierre Camus. Um, Serayan, we have not had the Triton here for some time. If you would... I know you are certainly quite healthy, but should you feel the need for an examination, it would do wonders for our learning facility. You should do it. Purely what? in the name of healing and science, I assure you. Your <laughs> dignity is not of question. Well, obviously my dignity is not of question. <laughs> obviously. A good oh, sorry, I just got oh. stairs. <laughs> a good princess yes. would help. You should uh, consider that. One moment, please. <laughs> you see, sir, I am kind of like inch backward out of I, the group. I will turn. return shortly. Consider my offer. Consider my offer. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh no shit. Is he, okay, okay. So? he go he I again he so? opens opens the door and kind of sneaks around it and closes it again and then Can, can um, I try to catch a glimpse of what, what what's behind that door? Oh, uh, make a perception check. Yeah, meanwhile Serene's trying to have a dead body. We'll pow out with Wave. <laughs> 21. 21. We'll reveal that in a second. Body. You hear Wave saying um there are so many potential converts here. I'm very disappointed in you, Sarayan. You have not mentioned Prasanna once. Or Umberly. No, she made a whole big spiel about it uh, yesterday. You I can't hear this, this, I don't think. Oh, that's true. <laughs> no, no, but true. I, yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm uh, saying that as Elena. It's been, like, oh, it's been a week, so... It's been like four um, weeks. That's but true. Yeah, she, oh, she gave Wave a whole, actually, like... like um, have you met... Wave is just that petty. Have you managed yeah. to Wave follow like up on edge. any of your conversions, Sarayan? I haven't had a chance yet, but I was hoping to convert quite a few people tonight at the ball. This is good. This should be your primary goal in attending okay, the ball. Okay, so I should... Oh, <clears throat> sorry, before you go. Um, So so I, sh I shouldn't allow them to, to examine me? I really don't care, Sarayan. Oh! <laughs> Okay. Okay, love you. <laughs> she puts the trident back on her back. <laughs> and and her Let's face see. is just stuck like this. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah, looking around the corner, um, you even catch a glimpse. Um, it's sort of in the shiny lantern. You see a bit of the reflection that gives you an angle into seeing around the corner. Behind this door, you can see water dripping. 
there look to looks to be very little light and like he's taking actual a ragged torch off a sconce and descending into what looks like a nearly collapsed dungeon a stark stark contrast from the fine sort of study that you're currently sitting in mm. and where's another stupid fish face fairy when you need it <laughs> <laughs> and well. he returns a few minutes later and gives you all lineages and some records from the nobility uh, births and deaths certificates and that sort of thing we'll ask you if you need anything else besides that um i before he leaves i'll just kind of casually say like you know what we're attending the ball later tonight and um being from out of town um you know we don't know our hosts particularly well i was sort of curious if you had any uh local insight that is worth sharing hmm. uh yes foreigners you will have a grand time it is insulting to reach over the plate to grab food big mistake large social faux pas okay Also, it is, it is better to accept a dance and then excuse yourself for mm, incompetence rather than denying the asker. <laughs> However, if you dance with the Duchess herself, it is a great honor, and I would not recommend withdrawing mm. from her steps. Someone is likely to cut in. I, I truly feel, well, clumsy of foot, then. Mm. Is she, I um... do blend in, oh, because she picks who she dances with. Does, Anything uh... else? Does she have family? Is this she hosting on her own? Uh, she is the sole judge, duchess at the moment. Do you mean to court the duchess, Donner? One of you. Uh, Saran looks pointedly at Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin's pouring over notes. I, I assure that through. that's, that's merely <laughs> an, a question uh, coming from a desire to understand who we're spending our time with. Uh, if uh, I, that is good. You have not made nearly enough fanfare to be on such a quest. So, Prince Ali, have any other <laughs> questions? Prince <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you've been very helpful. Thank you. I do have That's patience cool. to attend to. Um, um, you can summon me if you need sir? anything else, sir. Yes. <laughs> Would you like to? Um, be examined. Saran turns and looks slowly <laughs> at Melvin. Do it. Who is still pouring over genealogies, completely engrossed Mel in his research Melvin. at this point. She scoots hey, up hey. over his shoulder. <clears throat> what? Mel Melvin. Oh. The um, they want they want to um, they want to ex examine me here, and they say it's it's for science. Should I do it? For, for knowledge. I, you should help me go through these. There's a lot of notes. So maybe I you can come back them... later and, and let them do that later. Maybe I like, can come back later? Like after Any the party? Time. We will make you quite comfortable. No I worries. You know. And then oh he God. leaves. <laughs> Wait, okay, no, you're right. Comfortable. And Melvin immediately, or uh, Liz, hi, I'm Liz, sorry, immediately <laughs> begins <laughs> pouring over <laughs> notes next to Melvin. All right. Sounds like we've got some investigation checks coming. I would love yeah. to lend my aid, David. Okay. Maybe uh, maybe a roll. certain cleric could uh, guide, guide our investigation. You don't have guidance? Maybe. <laughs> I could, but I was so encapsulated oh, with the, oh, oh. the horrors of them yeah, checking on Yeah, I will on, say on that I uh, I don't have any 
modifier or proficiency in investigation. I will give Liz Sarayan guidance. How's that? Liz Sarayan. Liz Sarayan. I am Liz Sarayan. Yes. Oh my gosh. Me Better legally you change your name now. Da, 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 da. Crack and dice. Guidance. Uh, I have a, a 13. dirty 20. Ooh, but you gave me guidance, so it's plus four, right? Yeah, throw uh, a counter. It's a d4. d4. Oh, a d4. Oh my gosh. Well, it's so great that I have all of these crack and dice that I can choose from. Crack and uh, crack and dice. So crack I can uh, roll these cutie crack and dice. Everyone. Crack and dice, crack and dice. Ooh, and a three. Dice. So 16. So what's the total? 16. 16. And 16. I had a 20. 20. And a 20. Okay. Woo. Um, Sarayan, in your search over the genealogies and such, you are able to determine it looks like most recently the Duchy Donaire has been passed to Cedra as normal. You don't see anything about a name Dominic in the genealogies. Okay. However, in the plague records and such, um, shuffled together, Melvin, you're able to find scrawled notes. It truly looks like they were at their wits end trying to deal with this crisis. And you do see something about a um, heir apparent born to the Duke and Duchess Donaire. And that name scribbled briefly in a margin is Dominic. It only appears once in other places, either the record is removed or simply non-existent. I That's from nothing. the plague based on period? Your, based on your, um, that's when he was born. But based on the years, and this is strange based on what people have said, but you believe that he would be in his late, in his mid fifties, perhaps at this point, if he were still alive, you find no record of death or anything beyond that. And does it list who the parents are specifically? Yes. Um, so can we match that to the genealogy that we have to figure yeah, out so that what all generation he should be? It's just, so for whatever this... reason, the medical notes during the plague, when it's very disoriented and sort of scattered that he brought you, you do find a reference to this person. In the more formalized genealogy book that he's brought, there is no mention of him. Right, but is is his are his parents mentioned? So I can figure out yes. what generation he would belong to. Is this Cedra's so it's the same, generation? It's the same as um, Cedra Donaire. Okay. Got so it. presumably a, a sibling oh, of hers. Sibling. Yes. Um, okay. He was pronounced in this, in your research, as heir apparent. But in the later documents, any mention of him seems to be completely removed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so it's... It, Sorry, is it safe to say that Melvin shares all of this information with the rest of the yeah. party? Yeah, because we're, we're helping yeah. him. Oh, cool. yes. Yeah, it just—it looks like Dominic was probably Cedra's old, older brother. Oh. Um, but there's no mention yeah, of him in any... the genealogies or anything. I it's know. just this one little scribbled bit in the margins. That's so bizarre. Um, but it if seems he was like older... he's been sorry, wiped sorry, out I'm completely. I'm just excited. By all yeah, this no, knowledge. you're fine. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's very strange. Because he's not at all, like Melvin said, in the genealogy. And if he were the older sibling, wouldn't that have made him next in line for inheritance? Indeed it would. Well, I mean, did the plague have, like... For the, for the few people that survived, did the plague have, like, physical or mental impact in the long run that would discount him as an heir and so they would remove him from the records because a lot of higher level elite families will do that looking so with, with that investigation check looking through other similar elite families everything was well documented especially with the families that came here to be treated um, hopefully to survive bring their children 
um, no other missing records or anything like that. Hmm. Okay. I think this was done intentionally. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm getting that, I, uh, that vibe. I guess yes. my question was, did the family scrub him from the records because of something that happened during the plague period? Like, Possibly. my question to the group is... Gotcha. I thought you were... I, I misread your no, question. Not, I was just saying you, that, that hasn't, <laughs> doesn't seem to have been... Doesn't seem to have happened in other cases. And so... No. That you can tell. I'm it's thinking just, he's the kid in the in the attic kind of thing. Just quickly... He's Leo DiCaprio, guys. <laughs> That's what I'm like. Thank to KH Hawkeye, who tipped $18. Yes, oh, hi. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, no, uh, thank you. Gosh, boop, 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 That's fine. The rest of the group will probably boop. carry that on to next session. But yeah, we'll yeah. take thank it. Thank you very much. Thank Hawkeye. you. What? Hawkeye, Kitty, I'm guessing. Are you talking about? Well, because they kept the man in the iron mask. He was oh, like, well, in the... did you ever hear the story? In the dungeon. He was in the dungeon. The room away from everyone. That's what I was going with. The downstairs attic. Particularly of, of upstairs, there's basement. this old story about this this campaign of adventurers who um, who fought the vampire Strahd, and one of the characters, Claire, fell in love with a boy who lived in an attic. I see. I heard a different version of that story. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, used to try to banish cats. She was into um, it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my favorite ages. part of that. See, that's an apocryphal God. version of the story. <laughs> Um, I heard I heard something similar when I was growing up um, when they were teaching us in the temples. Well, you had yes. bad teachers then. <laughs> one second. I mean, I was just going to say <laughs> the main Claire's character like, for no. our story was this guy named like Otto. And like, <laughs> he was, he seemed who to was be from the a sanitarium. He was oh my from, God. I, no, he was an auxiliary no. character. He was from a temple. He wasn't from a sanitarium. It, it, it was also he was it was also a, from a sanitarium. sanitarium. Yeah. Well, that wasn't in the version that I chose to remember. I no, you chose a student. bad version. <laughs> oh my I god, it's like the, the auto fan the fanfic hero version. <laughs> my edition is better than your edition. <laughs> Who's got the Baron Rider? But which one is unabridged? <laughs> which one is the critical edition? Mine has yeah, annotations. Which is the critical unabridged. <laughs> Wow, this 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 kept this thread kept <laughs> we going. We vamped for you. We vamped for we you. We vamped. Right. You stepped away. So, what? Auto. You guys find this information. Clearly, there is the missing link here. Um, again, so here you are in the hospital. Is there any other things here um, that you want to look into? Did Mariah share what she saw? Well, so I was going to, as, as uh, that conversation yeah. spins on with Melvin, I, I, I did say so. that, and then I, I kind of start edging closer to the door. Um, Mariah, <laughs> I was gonna Mariah, if going to say, we wanted, we could <laughs> try to charm him to let us down there. Was it locked? Did he lock it, DM? The door that goes downstairs? Um, yes. Oh, titties. Simple lock, but... Where? As Mariah herself would say... <laughs> titties <laughs> hey they're great <laughs> i mean um nene peace you wanna, wanna work your magic i mean they're they're, they're pretty nice huh no. <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah <laughs> is that is that the kind of magic that we're doing now titty magic titty magic, titty okay. magic. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. We're sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> so I went to this bar <laughs> once. I'm not um, serious. And what's happening? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nene, do you want to? Do you want to unlock the door? Yes. Oh, so, so we're not going to ask for permission. We're just going to get and go for it. Okay. That I mean, we can creepy. ask for permission if this doesn't work first. <laughs> I'm a noble. People just assume that I should be where I am. Ooh, okay. Where? It's true, it's on my character sheet. Check it. Panaris, <laughs> if you're gonna pick a lock, you can do a sleight of hand check. Ah, that's what I'm looking Guidance, for. guidance. Ooh. With guidance. Thank God. What is. Oh, no. <laughs> I give the guidance. What, what is my oh, guidance? Oh, no. Is that a d4? Four. 
Roll and you've a d4. Got a d6 as well. Roll a caltrop. Okay, so at the minimum, you're getting a 10. <laughs> Wait, you don't also I have, have a d20, d20 inspiration? inspiration? Yeah. Yeah, but you have to declare it before you roll. I declare. I thought you have to declare it before. Um, that's that's the six. D6. That's I'll the use the d6. Give you a new inspiration as well. All right, so d4. I'm roll. saving that shit. Yeah, we got a party to go to. Oh, today. nice. That's a t- total of a party. Ten. Party. And you've got ten. What about your d6? My d6. Come on. Also a friggin' one. <laughs> oh yeah. God. Unfortunately, eleven. eleven isn't going to do it with this <laughs> lock. Damn it. Nice. It's not complicated. It's just very, very sturdy, and res- you know, and, and as such, is resistant to thieves' yeah. tools. I have a plus seven in this. It's ridiculous. Um, Today is not many. Roll a two, a one, and a one. Bad Mariah, luck. did did you want this to be opened without any sign that we had opened it? Was that the goal, or do you just want to get through it? Probably prudent. Why? Because oh, um, water expands. So you could probably pop this kind of simple lock with water by freezing it, which I know Talise can do, but it was, yeah. it's kind of destructive, so that probably isn't a good idea in that case. Wait, are they half barrel hinges? <laughs> I was going to say, the hinges are probably on the other side. Sorry. <laughs> wow. The appropriate application of leverage. <laughs> leverage? <laughs> Anyway. Oh dear. I know all Bye. about simple machines. Um, Bye. we should probably not leave a, a a trail of our misdeeds here. Trail of our misdeeds. Yes. Um, well, I, uh, DM, can can I see through the keyhole? Yes. Like, does it go all the way through? Mm-hmm. Um. I am, for the first time in front of the group, going to focus on my book. And I'd like to manifest the embodiment of my spell book. Oh. Damn, son. Um, And out of the open pages of my spell book is going to rise this blue, sort of neon glowing script um, and if you take a look at my character art you will see it behind his head in fact cool. um, I think he's on screen right now no just, just no he's not. rip now he is <laughs> there he is yeah although it looks like that one's cropped maybe but but he'll whatever. be gone he'll come around eventually yeah uh but anyways um if, can I drag myself out onto this map yeah DM? that sure. map or map? background yeah yeah yeah. i will resize yeah. you so oh. you can great thank you so we can see the there little it is. glowing blue script that floats in the air it gives off a dim light um and it is intangible um although it cannot pass through objects so i was wondering if it could pass through the keyhole here um yeah, yeah. I mean, does it is it a fixed size or can it squeeze through? It doesn't specify that it's a fixed size. It doesn't specify anything like that. So, okay, uh, is the six like level a... order of the scribes manifest mind? So and, okay, it just yeah. So yeah, I... I can I can put it into sure the chat. I think here. Yeah, there we go. Um. Tiny spectral object. Tangible doesn't occupy its space. That to me sounds like it's almost <laughs> minuscule. So um, yes, I will say that can go through a keyhole. Perfect. So I'd like to send that in to go take a look around. Um, okay. And I can. Um, do it can go up to three hundred feet away from me, and. I think I can see and hear with it. Telepathically uh, share with you what it sees and hears and the action required. Thank you. Okay, so you go Sorry. down what looks to be a very decrepit staircase into an area that has rows and rows of filing 
um, drawers made out of wood. Some of them are breaking apart. Some of them are near collapse. This place looks terrible. Um, but that's what you see. It looks just very um, run down. Uh, beyond that, there's no, not even room for a secret door or anything like that. It's just records. You see some history, some past patients. You see a file that says current patients that's nearest. About it. Oh. Mm. Just quickly, a massive thank you to Isometric for 5,000 bits. Wow. wow. Much oh appreciated, buddy. Long time thank you so much. much. Good to see you again, mate. Cheers, Cheers to yeah. you, sir. Enjoy. Alcohol, I hope but... I hope O and D goes well. I know I'm afraid for it, so good luck in it. So enjoy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, oh that's so nice. So thank we, you. We have the same job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, yeah, you and Harry do, yeah. Yep. So there's no other doors in here or anything. It's just a records no. room. Yep. Mm. Where does he go? Okay. That's crazy. Well, he he was getting the records for you and then <clears throat> leaving, he going went back up, he went up the, the other, other door. way, the way you came in. Oh, I thought he like left through that door the last time. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I was like, so, yep. Obviously, there's information creepy. on um, current patients, and then there's the history and stuff there. That's what you got. Seems, uh, so. Mariah, there there is some information about current patients, but other than that, I don't. There's no other doors or anything, so it doesn't look like there's anything <sighs> hidden. All right. Well, I don't know. We could try to convince him to let us see records on current patients. Maybe there's something in there. Maybe. These notes are a mess, but I don't see any discharge papers for for Dominic Denair. He wasn't ad was he admitted or was he just noted as being born? It looks like he was born here. Is that the case, Peter? Mhm. Mm um okay. well, at least a doctor noted his birth. Okay. So if if he was born here and was never discharged, he'd still be a patient, right? True. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I think they've got him stuck in a room somewhere. Yeah, but if we... There's no guarantee that he's gonna bring us the file. Well, we right? could just charm him into letting us have free access. Oh, right, um, I totally forgot I could I... do that. <laughs> well, we can do... <laughs> Sorry, we can, we can do that, or, I mean, as long as... No offense, but as long as he's of a, a lower social rank than I am, it, it's amazing what being nobility can get you. I am well, we, we could start intimately with that. aware of that fact. And then I'm and saying. then if that doesn't work, yeah, we could use a fallback. I'm just saying. I you see Mariah bristle slightly at that uh comment from Saray and, and uh Serena so is so back. used to Mariah bristling at her oh, that she someone, does not even clock it. I assume someone goes and rings the little bell. Oh, it's definitely Serena. Imperial. This time he has a cloth in his hands and he's wiping off curious red substance from his hands. Um, mm. Kind of tosses it aside. Curious is there really? It's just paint. It's just paint. Sure. It's red uh, food coloring. My... Yeah, he's cooking. Is there something else that you need? Yeah, um, and I, I sort of reach down and kind of make it look sort of absentmindedly tap a little bit of a beat on the, the small drum that's at my hip. Um, you know, we're just really curious about the kind of work that you do here, and we'd love to see the files that you have on your current patients as I cast suggestions. That you let us see them. Ooh. Ooh. So. <laughs> Dice. Uh, just to let That's everyone know, we do. Ooh. That was a sound. We do have a hype Ooh. train going, but the, the animation's it. not working. I'm trying to fix it. Uh -oh. We're at level three already. Ooh. 
wonderful, generous people. You thank you so much mm -hmm. thank for you. your support. Um, I have rolled a seven on the dice, really and uh, he's he ain't got you. plus five uh, or you. plus eight, so yeah. uh, he fails. Okay. Of course, um, and he. I will bring the entirety of the current patient records. Yes. I, I would, yes. Yeah, that'd be kind of great. Or opens like... up the door, sneaks behind it like he usually does, locks it behind him, and then brings a enormous stack of files. Okay. And then, uh, then he kind of looks at you specifically. It's concentration up to eight hours, so I don't. Does it know end that once he completes it, it ends the task? Oh, it completes ends the when he's finished it. Oh, okay. I would have totally phrased it. But a fun caveat. Mind. Never mind. We're all good. Oopsie poopsie. Will Terrain there be just anything looks else? Imperiously. No, have a great day. Him. You missed a spot Thank on your you hands, by the so way. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you so much for doing as we requested. You're dismissed. <laughs> yeah. Waves the offers, webbed hand. And he looks curious as as you flap that webbed hand, he kind of you can tell him he looks at the hand very closely. Then he looks at your ears, which are also sort of webbed, and his eyes sort of flit around yeah, your are. anatomy. Ew. The offer stands and he turns around and walks. Great, thanks up. so much, your <laughs> put the hand away before he takes it. Right, I'm sorry. She sticks it very awkwardly underneath her uh, armor, her, her breastplate. Um, You're dismissed. Shall we do a uh, an investigation check here, Melvin? Uh, have some aid, maybe uh, some assistance from Talise. Yeah, sure. Well, cool. um, guidance. And I'll, I'll start <laughs> with what suggest. appear to be the largest and oldest documents, and work my way towards smaller okay. ones. Because if this person's been here for fifty years, it seems. I touch you, Melvin. <laughs> Uh, Such a creepy. I'm gonna clock. check something really quick. Hold on, um, because I might give you inspiration. I'm just trying to check if I get these back on a short rest. <laughs> I can't remember anymore. <laughs> While you're doing that, I think it's a certain we level just will be completing level rest. three hype train. Yay! Hey. So, massive thank you to Isometric for five thousand bits, Pingu for a hundred, Chelsea for a gifted sub. Uh, oh. Big Jim for 100 bits, Hawkeye for another 100 Ooh. bits, and Gruntled for 100 bits. Thanks, guys. Um, Hawkeye. I mean, Big Jim was actually 101. 101. Sorry, I didn't see yeah. that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Peter, uh, um, I don't know what you want to do for that. That's everyone else. Oh, I can get it back on a short rest, We've so I, I will play. I don't Sorry. have inspiration. I have a D6, but I don't have the D20. You could probably do five um, healing potions and a couple of D20s, or four healing potions healing and a couple of D20s. Obviously, I oh gosh, I don't know top. what to, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do with all of this. Um, uh, 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 That's not we'll, what I meant. To we'll roll. say that the group will all start off with the D6 next time. We're going to have some Ooh. hefty skill challenges coming up soon, so um, those will be useful. Um, Elena, is that a D8? Uh, yeah, I wanted to say I, I will. I confirmed that I get them back on short rest, so I will play Melvin a little inspirational melody uh, to grant him uh, bardic inspiration as well. And you're assisting cool. as well, right? Yes. Okay. So I've rolled an 18 on the Kraken die, plus wow. two from uh, the Guidance, plus five from the bardic inspiration. So that's 25 before my modifier, which is 7. So 32. One. Melvin. Wow. Yeah, 32, right? Oh. Oh. 25 you plus 7. tear oh, okay. into these files with a intellectual fervor. <laughs> and it is immediately disappointing. You go through files long about treatments, extended surgeries, and whatnot you, you find the names you find the discharge records you go through you find some discrepancies and deaths and fortunately don't everything makes sense and they're all in order and even the ones that don't make sense you find that oh 
There's an addendum that was stuck in the wrong folder. Someone stuffed it in. So you don't see anything. I'd like um, to keep a running list on a spare sheet of parchment of all of the discrepancies yeah. that I've noted so that I can <laughs> hand it to them on right. the way out. And they, You're with welcome. that investigation check, they're all noted. The discrepancies all match up to miscues or wrong filings until you shuffle off the last paper and you find a very thin file on the bottom that just says 314 parentheses black door an unnamed patient with instructions on how to feed them without removing a gag <gasps> and extended instructions on not to under Capri. any circumstances remove the blinding device yes son in case there was ever any doubt <laughs> it's DiCaprio it's absolutely we gotta go guys god I love that so much so if we ever find oh, Dominic it's just the token is DiCaprio <laughs> well we know right. where to find him yeah we know where to find him now yeah we do know where to find him now we know exactly yeah. where to find him Three, and how to get him. Black door. And we have the protocol to feed him, which would be... Casey when... gets hungry. <laughs> well, I was like, he's when, there's, like he's, when they're expecting somebody to be there, so we could maybe, you know, um, sneak someone in there at that time when it would be normal to see someone at his door. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, someone sneaky, like Nene. She's sneaky. Or... Or we could just take care of it now and then put him on the ship. It was like, or literally anyone, but just anyone that it would not need to be as sneaky at that time. Uh, it's not going to gonna be so I'll tell you. Or, or we, we could just get the, no, the guy to come take us to the door, and then we could just take him with us. So here, wait, which him? guy? The, the one that... I just left? Yeah, the one that just Wouldn't left. we have to charm him? Again? Okay, see, here's my concern about that. We've already sort of led on to the fact that we're interested in something specific. Um, And if he's keeping Dominic upstairs at the behest of a certain other someone, then wouldn't he tell? And that would be bad um do we have a way to convince him to not tell that he we has no tell reason to, to do anything for them? us that is that more than he would do for Sadra Janair she has way the fuck more power here than we do I mean like we could if it came out to a you know knock down drag out fight in the mud like we would kick her ass but like that's not the kind of power we're talking about here what if I let them examine me? We're not doing that. Peter <laughs> dies. <laughs> <laughs> um, what if we're, we're not doing that? What if that guarantees their fealty? Yeah, they're gonna chop you up into little fishy bits if we let them do that. You think so? Right. They said that I wouldn't be. Well, they said I'd be comfortable. Yeah. yeah. As they like knock you out and then you're dead. You're going to get and turned into goldfish. Your pilgrimage. Yeah, you're going to be snacks. You're I'd be, like, to be a snack, but I don't want to be snacks. No. Yeah, you're going to be sashimi on a plate if they have it here, which they should because they seem to think that they're cool. Oh, no. They have matcha, they have sashimi. But what if I use my noble carriage? They're gonna dissect that noble carriage. No, yeah, I'm saying like in conversation. I can be very it's persuasive. Not, babe, it's not gonna work. Mm. I love you, but it's not gonna work. <gasps> you love me? I know you could write that down. Melvin will. <laughs> wow. No. Melvin attempted Tchaikovsky. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin is furiously scribbling in this book. <laughs> oh my god. Are, are you taking Corn. dictation as she sings the Tchaikovsky too? Because that's. Oh my god. Yeah. Quote, quote Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, baby. <laughs> um, Get it? Every note, every rhythm. All right. What's the oh. immediate dictation. plan, guys? Charge. I think that we. <laughs> me, I don't know. Maybe come back later when there's fewer people here. 
Well, I still think we should try to tie it into the time that he gets fed, because that's when I think that's no, that's totally legit. Actually, no. Okay, so, let, you know what we should do? We should take a walk around. We should say that we we just want to do a little cool. tour and just just walk around, and we're just gonna observe the place and see if we can pick out where where the black door is. All right, yeah, let's just let's take um, a little let's, walk. Let's ask the the head surgeon if he can assign a a lesser less less important surgeon to give us a small walking tour of the the hospital. A med student. We yeah. do this. Yes. They are of zero importance. Exactly. <laughs> Amen. You can't get lower than that. They got Sorry, at guys. least two hundred thousand dollars in loans. They'll do whatever we ask them to do. <laughs> oh, well, so, um, really, I don't know really if you guys depressing. know, but hashtag USA. Uh, anyway, we <laughs> a noble carriage really helps. <laughs> Privilege, you know that sort of thing. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, there's no. Does your carriage here. drive itself? Of course, it's a Tesla. It's actually just a pumpkin. <laughs> it's a pumpkin. It just rolls. <laughs> it's all That's what matters. Anyway, hey, if I put it in another its resilient sphere, up, it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> based on your checks earlier, um, the head surgeon is irritated at you and will not. Um, do you the favor of showing any restricted areas or um, gathering you any more documents or anything, but um, the basic but grounds, yes. The I previous... demand it. <laughs> <laughs> Peter we might... face! We might She's a princess. Out? But what if I demand it? Are you, are are you insisting? For say, I, am, I am insisting because, right. and I'll tell you why, I'm insisting uh, not only to be obstinate, but because thanks to my quote, D and D Beyond character sheet, thanks to my noble birth, people are inclined to think the best of me. I am welcome in high society, and people assume I have the right to be wherever I am. <laughs> the common folk make every effort to accommodate you and avoid your displeasure. No, the people Ooh. of high birth treat you as a member of the same social sphere. You can secure an audience with the local noble. Same social too. sphere. Yeah, but he right. would be common oh. beneath me. Is he? He is not quite. You take but him But he's like to beneath be... me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what is it? Keep, keep it's a trying. perception thing. <laughs> okay, Serene, I... this is a difficult check, uh, but okay, go ahead but and let's make do a... It. Please make a persuasion check. <laughs> All right. Can I give you like seven, inspiration? seven... Stop I do. Curiosity. I have my D six inspiration, so have I'm gonna add that. Can I? Can I give guidance? I don't. For this? You do. You I don't do. Everyone's got D twenty. I do. Everyone has one. Well, then I'm the gonna do my D twenty inspiration as well. Can I give her guidance so, for how amazing right. the upper class she is? Okay, well, so I got a twelve. So I can guidance. roll again, right? If I'm using the D twenty. Yes. Yes. If you declared your rolling advantage, roll twice. Yeah, I'm gonna roll an add advantage. Where's this conversation happening, okay, by the way, Peter? 15. Did we go upstairs? I assume you Plus went upstairs, yes. Okay. My modifier of five, which is a dirty 20. Is Did that you with your D6, D6 inspiration? As well? Nope. That's just with my D20. Ooh. You want to use the D6? You, use the you know what? Ooh. What the hell? Why not? Let's do <laughs> it. Like, you got guidance which I as well. Already, you do also like, have guidance, so it's so another D4. Funny. D4. So funny. <laughs> Oh, beans. Okay, let's not talk about the, the D6 because I rolled a one. Got but that's D4. okay because it's 21. 21. So far. And then I have a four. need to find my little pyramid so I can roll my D4. Here it is. And two. So 23. 23. DC 23 persuasion check. He looks at you and um, he l turns a um, long hard glare to Mariah. I just smile. And it, and it looks at you. And says, I'm sure if we come to a mutual understanding, I could help you. This will, I assure you, be of no embarrassment to you, but the hands, the feet, the features that make your race and what it is under the water 
you can bring a trusted friend, even. But we have no sketches of the Triton physique here. Trusted. Would you do the? Would you do us the honor of helping to understand your ancient and mysterious people? And if I do that, you'll take us where we want to go. As long as you remain straightforward about it. Again, glancing at Mariah. Mariah, I know it's not in your nature, but you need to be honest. That's fucking <laughs> rude, but okay. I'm sorry! <laughs> Damn. I'm glad I'm she didn't say to that to rude. you, <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. I don't think it's in any I don't nature. lie my pants off. Just, just, um, before I can dig myself any deeper, Sharan looks <laughs> uh, appraisingly at the rest of her group. Well, I don't think many of these people like me except for Melvin. We like but you plenty enough. I literally just trying said to get I you love to do you this all evening. <sighs> I'm confused. Um, what is your decision? My decision is yes. I'm trying to pick my trusted advisor if you will give me the time, good sir. Uh, and she turns and looks again at the group of people. And she holds up one webbed finger. Mm -hmm. Priyan, I would like you to accompany me. Of course. Totally the right choice. <laughs> De Very good. Definitely the safest choice. No. <laughs> yeah. Allow well, because Priyan will you... beat somebody up. <laughs> Allow me to show you around the basic area and you get a tour Yay, at tour. Um, one point he does lead you up to the eastern wing the third floor and oddly enough here after seeing so many wooden doors um some iron doors many of them open you can see in patients receiving care um some of this isn't as creepy as you would have thought um melvin glancing into certain rooms some of them it's like every room has its own alchemical setup so they can receive very um fresh and very potent doses of um medicines and potions and such you're like oh my gosh this is actually quite advanced in some ways um and then you go up to um um the eastern wing, the third floor, and most of the doors are locked. And they are all assigned a color. And as you walk down the way, you see, you, you hear almost nothing coming from beyond these doors. You pass a blue door, a purple door, a green, orange, white, and violet. And then lastly, there is a door at the end of the hall that is painted black and has two locks upon it. Well, this is the last. I hope you are impressed. Um, these okay. we use mostly for our most problematic patients that through curses or things not of their own fault at all um, require security as well. I see. Um, could you explain the, the colored doors? Um, is there some meaning to each of the colors, or is it just so that you can differentiate the doors? He kind of looks between them and says, ah, Well, they were numbered at one point, but... Something... The caretakers, um... The numbers got... The colors were easier, and... Well, we just never thought to change it. I, I see. Is there okay. anything else, or... I have other patients waiting for me. Uh, no, thank you. This this was a very informative um, uh, tour, and it's a very impressive facility that you've established here. There's a nice view out on the end of the hallway of the Mentlio and the port. Um, Please do not knock on any of the doors. See yourself out. Sarayan? <clears throat> yes. 
when you are ready, please show up. I shall assemble the anatomists. And we are honored to know the biology of the most noble race of the Tritons and the most noble example. Of course. And he walks and heads down the stairs. Wow. If I had to do okay, so how are we going to get into this room? Uh, I kind of want to go look over at the door and just examine it a little bit. See what is perhaps to be seen. Uh I'm going to go over to the window at the end of the hall. Take a look at that. It's a beautiful view of the rest of the menu. He's right. The window? Yes. Um... Here? Yes, this one can. From the inside? Just a simple latch. Hmm? I'd like to unlatch it. Okay, and just leave it. it. Like, partially open. And look, okay. make it look like it's been closed, but leave it unlatched. Sure. Done. Um, I'm gonna... Do you, do you want a perception check or an investigation check on the door? Uh, investigation. I'll also point out what I did to the window to Anaris. So she knows. Melvin, help me. <laughs> um, sorry, what? what I'm investigating the door. <laughs> taking a look at the door. Okay, I can help with that. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, there yeah. are a pair of locks of medium security. You would say. Okay. Can I hear anything? Um, make a perception check as you lean your ear to the door. What do my elf ears hear? 25. Wow. <laughs> you hear breathing, almost a sigh, and you hear a sort of metallic um, uh, collision almost like just chains or metal pieces clanking against one another ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. And... uh, Is there anyone else in the hall? Like anywhere, anyone who's not us? Not at the moment. Um, not, okay, so not so loudly that I think it's going to echo down the hall, but just loudly enough that I think someone who's inside this door might hear it. I'm going to say, Dominic, you in there? We know you're there. We're working on it. Mm-mm. Mm. I don't know what he's saying, guys. <laughs> Can I get a sense for what he's trying to communicate? There's a desperation and an urgency. Play him a song, Mariah. That might attract <laughs> some attention. <laughs> ah. Wait, since my boyfriend has no tongue, can I understand him? <laughs> since I'm used got to a lot of practice. People... Hey. Wow. Uh... We've only spent two weeks with him. Hey, <laughs> we're in love. You know, don't don't blame me time. for trying. When you know, you know. Right? It's just, it's just a spiritual thing. Just go with it. They've got a mind, I body, really and love soul to connection. Here. Gorlock communicate. It's kind I of love sentient. you too, Gorlock. It's, uh, <laughs> it's urgency rather okay, than okay. Um, there's a uh, sort of a normal acknowledgement and then as she says, all right, we're going to figure it out or whatever. He expresses urgency. Or, mm, can I check for traps around the door? Does it seem like anything beyond just the two locks that are there? You can make an investigation check, sure, for that. I give her the guidance. Hey, Melvin, is the store magical? Uh, I can find out. The light. Oh. I'm sure everything looks absolutely fine. <laughs> what is going on with your dice tonight? Hey, because they're not cracking. That's. Ooh. Be true, be true, be true, true. You do not find any traps. Uh, DM, I'm going to 
quick cast uh, detect magic as a ritual. My one per day. Okay. Um, All right. Boom. Let's the door. You do not sense any magic on this door or the locks. Okay. Anything inside? Um. Depends on how thick the door is, whether I can see through it. Um, I mean, it'd probably be four inches of wood, three inches of wood. Reinforced. Uh, a foot of stone, an inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. No, nope, you do not sense magic. any magic inside. Okay. It's all mundane. Yeah. I, I, in a slightly meta comment, my concern about trying to get him out now is that that might fuck things up at the party. It might put Cedra Denaire on high alert. Who says this one in here is the actual right person? Could be in another room. I'm pretty sure he's the right person. That sounds like the right one. He responded to the name. Oh, well, he responded to, to someone speaking at the door. If people don't normally talk to whoever's in there, it could be someone else. I mean, I agree. I I think it's him too, but also... Is like, this the 14th door in this wing, Peter? Mm-hmm. Oh, so the wing. <laughs> 314 Thanks, is the, the door, so yeah. this is the right place. Okay. So I guess my other... My one question is, does he want out? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That sounded like Indeed. a course. <laughs> that sounded Indeed. like no thanks. Okay. <laughs> and our it sounded like nay, nay. <laughs> nay, nay, yeah. another tongueless person is in here for you. Oh my god. Can you pick yes, this lock? I thought we were waiting until after. Are we waiting until after the ball we'll to do this? Or are we... Stop, stop are we... Um, um, we, 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 could, we could get him out. Invisibly, I can I can make him invisible. If we if we unlock the door, get him out, and relock it, we can just walk him right out. And they'll be distracted because they'll be busy. I they won't know until the next time Sarayan, they come defeat him. Freon will be. It right could out. be before the party, and then they alert Cedric uh, and Mary to the fact. We that have a gone. we have a, a list of the scheduled feeding times, right, Peter? Mm-hmm. Do we? When is the next time he's supposed to be fed? You feel like you, unless something is off or something happens, you have about an hour. Hmm. We'll definitely get fed before the party. Then we need so to we come back. So we can go to the party and come back for him. After the party. Or we split the party! <laughs> no. totally the party's it. already about to be split. <laughs> Split the party. Some of us literally. So, should we let you out now? Or should we come back for you? That That sounded like a now. That sounded like a now. Mm -hmm. That sounded like later. Tonight, but whatever. (laughs) I think it'll be fine. Captain, you're the one in charge. Um, I like. Uh, I want to go stand near the uh, hall, the wh- wherever the not, wherever other people might come from. Yeah, there's one stairway um, up, so you can go all. This is at the end of the hall, so you can go all the way down the other hall, and there's sort of a spiraling staircase leading up there. Okay. So you I'm just gonna give I'm go gonna there. give Nene a thumbs up for her to try the lock, and I will, and I'm gonna go post guard. Okay. You want to give inspiration before you go? Make- a you are so check. fucking awesome. <laughs> Make a perception, a perception check for that guard. Okay. For that. Uh, and, 14. Uh, are the rest of you okay? Are the rest of you breaking in? Can I let Nana do it first? Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> One, I have my d20 inspiration, and in, or did I? I didn't okay. use it, did I? Nope, because I didn't call it. So I'm using it. All right. <laughs> And you know what you're gonna get from me? What? One counter. Am I getting a gui- am I getting a guidance from you? Yes, you are. You are getting one but caltrop. Wapa. A spiky spiky dice. A spiky spike. Don't step on it. So a sleight of hand, right? Yes. Sweet. Okay, so there's one. 
Ooh, nice. Okay. And I'm going to use my inspiration in case I can do better than that. And I also have 18. 18. Okay. And now there's a second lock. Second lock. So you don't have to use your D6 if you feel the 20 is good. You do. And I should say the 20, you feel great about the 20. Okay. You've got that lock. No problem. Okay. I'm going to save it. then. (laughs) Yeah. So make your lock. The second lock. So we need another roll for the seventh block. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And two locks with your dexterous touch oh, are redeemed. split apart like nothing. Bang. The door stands ready to be opened. Do it, do it, do it. Can I do one more investigation to make sure there's no more traps? Nope, you've already um, checked. Before nope. before they open the door, I so the other give like the yay she did it. Um, I'm going to cast <laughs> silence on that area. Okay. No, you don't want me to cast silence on the area, Melvin. Visibility is a verbal component. How about just outside the door then? In case something explodes. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. I was I afraid guess. of an alarm. Oh, okay. A That's thinks fair. there's no yeah. trap. Okay. Chael says there's a freaking trap, and I just okay. don't know yeah. it yet. I don't want all an right. alarm door. to go off, so I'm going to put silence whoop. just over the door. Everything goes silence, and you all are hearing oh. nothing in the area in the hall. Okay. I point, I, uh... I point to me, and then the door. I back up. I back up. I uh, open the door gently. You hear a click and then a sound as it opens. Nothing happens. The room inside is painted completely black and there stands there a clock ticking, pendulum swinging back and forth, silent now in this spell and you see lying on a bed chained there propped slightly up appears to be a man with a helmet of sorts on blinders across his eyes the series of chains that connect it to a ornate padlock and a leather strap across his mouth that is buckled together behind the head He is chained to the bed in an ornate pattern of uh, restraints. You can see him kind of moving his head around, just going against the restraints when he can, looking around, almost like he's trying to hear what has suddenly gone silent. Um, I meant for the silence to only overlap with just the door Mm-hmm. Not to go he's, into the room. So he is. So the people outside the door are silent. He's been hearing what's been outside the door, and now he's. Oh, looking around I see. I see. I see. I see. What happened? Gotcha. Yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'll follow. <laughs> I, we're here still. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Keys. <clears throat> Go and try to remove his gag. Okay, there's a simple buckle on the back. That you can undo and yeah. take out a rag. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is that you, Salt Marsh? I feel so much, I. Yes. <clears throat> oh, it was so long ago we made that deal, wasn't it? <sighs> My name is Dominic Donaire. 
I will release the plague that curses my city. But you, you, you are going to kill my sister for me. I'm going to help you. Sweet. You're going to what? replace this gag in a few moments. <laughs> For all, she has the only key that will release me from this bondage. Listen very carefully. This is what you need to do tonight. And you're gonna, guys, gonna have to wait for those. No, I was ready. I was yeah. ready. And I was like, 